kiss you. Thanks, Joe. Yeah! You want to run or you want to duck down? You want to duck to the over and get onto the bench and stay there. You play to win the game. Hello? My message for the fans, we're all frustrated with where we are right now. J-E-T-S, Jets, Jets, Jets. Well, hello, everybody. Here we are again. Welcome to the Thursday Thick of It. I am Green Bean. That right there is my good friend Gunny the Gunderson right here for your listening and viewing pleasure. I, I got to say, Gunny, the first thing I noticed on today's intro is that I have the old logo. I got to I got to change this shit now. I got to test it. I gotta, I gotta do it. I'm not good at this. Take me along. You're, you're, you're out of date right now, and I'm old, so it's gonna be like I'm start working on it tonight, and I'll have it for you guys next year. There you go. There you go. That's but it's it, it works. It's in progress. It's in yeah. progress. So how you doing, man? You good? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. You know what I'm saying? We have a uh, new uni- uniforms are just uh, revealed. I think they look freaking amazing. They they gave us everything we wanted. Um. I think we're just waiting on the white helmets now. Hopefully that comes out here over the next couple of months. But overall, the uniforms were a hit. You got freaking Aaron Rodgers showing up to voluntary minicamp. Like, it's it's been a good week for us as Jets fans, right? Like, I think the only, I guess, question mark was the fact that the Jets brought in Brock Bowers during the Aaron Rodgers uh, visit. Seems like they were kind of like plotting something oh, there. Oh, man. But, you know, just a little. I tell you what, the timing on that one, buddy. If yeah, they wanted it, it, to get us talking and fucking stabbing yep. each other with number two pencils, then that they was sure the way did to it. do it. Have Brock yeah. Howard show up on day one. Uh, but it's good stuff, man. So, yeah. you know, Gunny, we got a good show tonight, man. We have uh, we have a guest. He's uh, he's right here. I'm staring at him right now. He doesn't know that, but I'm looking right at him right now. <laughs> um, but uh, this is the first time that he's like the sole guest on my channel he's been on the oh. channel but we had like others and we we're doing a hangout thing and so this is this is a historic kind of fun thing we're doing tonight gunny so i'm excited man you know who it is uh i think i have an idea you do i think <laughs> i do <laughs> well let's uh let's kill the suspense and bring on our good friend the one and only buffalo jets fan what's up dude what's going on thanks for having me on yeah man you up, in a good mood? How, how you doing tonight man you good well, I'm a little tired. I was just beating your uh, son in uh, that video game that you said you were the goat at, but now, now I'm the champion. So now you got to come through me. Whose son? My son? Your son, yeah. That video game that you guys are playing. I was just kicking the crap out of him. Where? Online. On the interwebs. Come on, you're old. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. He's like, come on, you're old. <laughs> yeah, I don't even know what's happening. He's like, what arcade know, were not. you guys at? <laughs> well, that's good. So now he's got to call you dad and that for a little while. That's the way it goes. Yeah. You got to pay his, uh, you know, he's he's 16. He's going to, he's got a car coming. He's got, it's all big stuff here, Buffalo. So I appreciate your help. It's nice. Oh, man. Thank you for yeah. leveling up the weirdness on that. I appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. You like that? <laughs> I'm good like that. I'll step it up. I tell everybody, like, when people try to get weird and ridiculous, I say, dude, like, just so you know, I can out ridiculous anyone. I can do this. We, if you want to follow an abstract, disgusting kind of see who can embarrass each other for, I could do this all the rest of the day. If you want to do it? So, uh, it's a disease I have, Buffalo. So it's not necessarily prideful that I say that, uh, but it's good to have you, man. I'm excited. Uh, we uh, we're kind of in this weird period now, right? Where we've talked it all out. Uh, a couple I was talking about the other night, years ago, even like recently, is like two years ago, maybe three years ago. There was only a few mocks out there. You know, obviously you had the yeah. big boys, you had the Kuipers and and the and the Schragers and things like that. But like as far as like around like Twitter and YouTube, it was like, you know, we had like a select few that did these mock drafts. It was fun. Now it's like I, I swear to God, I love mock drafts. I love like tinkering and, and reading and studying. And then there's a guy that falls me. I'm like, let me look at that guy. And then I do some breakdowns on him. And I it's gotten so weird now. It's like 10 a day per person yeah. sometimes you know what i mean yeah and totally. i'm at this place yeah. where we still have a week yeah for the draft buffalo what are you gonna do with this next period of time like what does a jet fan do with this week to all dried up on mock drafts we've 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 brock bowers did out uh what do we do what do we got left here we should probably argue about zach wilson honestly <laughs> you missed Bring that it back. 
<laughs> bring it back. Zach Wilson versus Tim Boyle. We got five more days of that, baby. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, it's it's crazy. My favorite thing is the like, I traded a 2029 six rounder for Brandon Ayuk. PFF accepted it. Shut up. Deal with it. And then <laughs> we got a three way trade. and We got Patrick. Mo- yeah, it's pretty nuts, man. And I love the draft. I'm definitely I'm not a draft expert, but I'm I'm a draft nerd. But um, I feel like the draft fatigue is where the like the quarterback fatigue was last year with like Aaron Rodgers and Derek Carr and all that stuff for months and right. months and months. So I wish it was a little bit sooner. Like I would have loved for the draft to just be tonight, man. Be, yep. That'd be great. And I'd be in New York. It'd be a whole thing. I'd, I'd like that too. But you bring up a great point, man. That's a good correlation. Like last year, we were talked out before we really could even sign anybody. It was like a, it was like a weird thing. I mean, Derek Carr got cut. Theoretically, we could have signed him, but you know, we, we were like done by the time it even happened. You know, it's like it, there wasn't even free agency yet. We were already tired. You know, it was a weird thing. Well, last year was weird too because usually our season is over beginning in November. Right. In 2022, we were actually in it in the playoff hunt till the second to last week of the season. I mean, we were not looking good, and and Zach sucked, and and the whole thing. But we were technically in it, but yet, so the off season was shorter, yet it seemed like it lasted forever. So this, this is kind of doing that same thing. It's, you know, I'm, I'm tired of arguing with people about players. We have our opinions. We're kind of, you know, I think we're somewhat on the side that we're going to be on, whether you want a weapon, whether you want a specific player or an offensive tackle, whatever it is. Um, and we just have to kind of roll with this. But uh, there is some news out there. Uh, I'm, I'm sure you've heard of, of uh, you know, you've heard it because you are on Twitter. You're active on Twitter, and that's where it lived uh, for the most part. But the Bill Belichick stuff, uh, Buffalo. Everybody is now all of a sudden acutely aware that this guy might be a, 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 a shitty person. This a is bum. <laughs> a bum. This is news. Now, did you know? I mean, it came from left field. This you can't trust Bill Belichick. What do you think of this shit? You know what you know what I call Bill Belichick without Tom Brady? Ron What's Rivera. That? Ron Rivera. There you go. Well, Not a bad difference? comparison. You know, I mean, it's so funny how we used to like, is it Brady or is it Bell? I don't know. Gee. And then like Brady immediately takes a team that hadn't been to the Super Bowl in like two decades and wins it the first year. Yeah. And he never he's never drank coffee. I think that was a tidbit that came out of that. Which is just a Brady doesn't drink coffee or no Bill Belichick. Bill Belichick he's never tasted coffee in his life. That was a, a nugget oh. that came out of that. Well, that's just silly now. Well, I would have never been able to tell with all the excitement he always. I know, right? Yeah. So I up all the time. <laughs> Who would have thunk it? <laughs> <laughs> it's great. Yeah, but to, so do you now? There are it's a speculated rumor, right? So we don't know. People are just kind of reporting that they've heard that kind of things. So we don't know if it's a fact, but it does reek of what we've been kind of looking at face to face for the last 20 something years. Uh, do you think there's truth to the fact that Ro- that Robert Kraft would call another owner of a franchise and say, Hey, I see you got your eyes on this Bill Belichick. Guy. I'm just going to let you know, you can't trust him. He's a, he's a shit bag kind of a thing. You think that that's really happening? I think it's possible because I know that Robert Kraft loved Tom Brady, like a son, like it's almost, it, kind of a to a interesting level um Mm -hmm. and there was clearly a i think there was clearly an ego riff at the end where bella they both kind of wanted to show they could do it without the other guy and they and belichick wanted to roll with with jimmy g i think that's pretty well documented and i think that Kraft made a hold that against him and and furthermore probably more so on belichick the gm because maybe he could he could still coach up a defense in his sleep um, but their drafts have been horrible. Their roster construction has been really bad. So, and if Bill Belichick wants control of your roster at what going on age 75, I think it's possible that he said, Hey man, I would go in a different direction. Now, of course the way it's written is like way more sensationalized than it probably was. But I think a, a colleague could have called up Robert Kraft, uh, for a reference and he could have been honest and that could have been the answer. Yeah. I mean, I think oh, there, I wanted to put that up there. I just shut it down. What's wrong with me? Um, I think that it's true, Buffalo. I think that it's absolutely true. Just like you said, I think it probably had something to do with the call came from the other side. You know, like, hey, just real quick, what do you think? I'm thinking about hiring your boy. What do you think? And he just said, ah, I couldn't wait to get rid of him kind of a thing. 
Yeah. You know, something like that. Let me see here. So you've mentioned their potentially weird relationship. Uh, this is, there are numerous <laughs> examples of this it's type of love. Yeah. The whole kissing on the lips thing. I so mean, weird. It, it, I mean, look, you know, I'm not, I, I, I can say that I, I feel as though I'm in touch with my, my feminine side. I, I come across as gruff at sometimes, but I'm really a sensitive fella and, and I'm a pretty accepting individual and, and I, you know, for to each their own, but that all said, this is weird. <laughs> that is very weird. Is his weird, mouth is man. opening. Look how he opened yeah. his mouth and everything for it too. That's yeah. it's just weird. That's and there's, odd. Just so, there's so many examples of it, you know. Uh, but I mean, and it's just the fact, like I don't know, Buffalo. I like you. I like Gunny, Jeremy. I love you know Ryan, Matt. I haven't kissed those guys over you once. Not one. Not no. even just cheek. Nothing. No, not, not at least since the playoff drought. <laughs> exactly. And then, well, hey, we haven't won a Super Bowl together, so maybe, maybe we just start. I not, never know. Start we'll anything out. I know. We don't that know. Lombardi could change some things. <laughs> we can't speak from that experience, so we get. Maybe we're dead wrong. Maybe we're all going to start doing exactly that. I, I could see it actually. I think we're going to get weird if if the Jets actually win the Super Bowl. I I I yeah. I cannot even imagine the reactions that are going to happen. Well, I guess yeah, we'll still. I'm sure fast. some of us will. Some of us will still be mad, though. We yeah, almost we didn't lost win by it. enough points. We, yeah, we, we didn't blow them out. What, what was that about? Yeah, yeah. Our buddy Jason Edwards checking in with his 13 month stream beaner membership super chat. Thank you for the support, Jason. Happy up, Thursday Jason? to the best Jets guys ever. We will win the draft. By the way, I picked up both Brees and Quinnen Alt Black jersey. Oh, fuck nice, yeah, nice. dude. That's Let me ask nice. you, Buffalo. Are, are you uh, are you planning to immediately respond to the logo change, the uniform change, and grab one of the jerseys? If so, which one are you thinking? Um, I had my eye on the the black Jermaine Johnson. Now I'm not a huge jersey purchaser because I have a a graveyard of just awful investments in that yeah. closet over there that I just couldn't even speak on. And I'm a jinx, to be honest. Yeah. Um, so, but I do, I do like the logo. I would like to get some like hats probably and some shirts, but I'm not, I mean, I don't even know what they're up to now. I think it's like 150 bucks. Like, yeah, I don't know. I, I'm probably good on, on jerseys. I'm not a, I'm not a huge person that cares a ton about the uniforms. Now I'm also not that like that get off my lawn guy who's like, I don't care if they play in pink tutus as long as they win the game. It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. People, people can be excited about it. That's cool. It looks way better. Um, I'm probably not going to go ahead and, you know, spend half my mortgage on, on merch though. I tell you, man, I didn't buy a Jersey for the, I think the last Jersey that I purchased was like, I think, what was, I think it might've been Chad Pennington. And then it just, we, we had this like weird and I wore Chad proudly for any, for years. And I had my Dennis bird and I had my gas, you know, and all those kinds of things. But I, I had a, a friend gave me a Muhammad Wilkerson. That was you. That was good for about a week. Uh, then, I, then it was garbage. And then I had a Sanchez jersey, and it was garbage. I refused to. My whole thing was when we give a guy a second contract, first round draft pick or something, a second contract. I'm not doing it for a free agent. They come here and they're and, and they they don't they are not the person we signed. You know what I mean? Right. Uh, at the end of their career. That's true. But I didn't buy a jersey for a very long time because I was waiting for a second con a real second contract, not a one year fill the gap Jordan Jenkins kind of a thing or Nathan Shepard. But I wanted to see us sign an actual like a, a, a top tier player. So I, I had to wait all the way until last year. Quinn and Williams. I finally got then the guy does he, he takes it upon himself to sign it. I didn't want him to. I didn't have a marker in my hand or anything for him to do it. He just found a marker and signed my jersey. And now I can't wear that either, Buffalo. So I got to get a new one. But it's a crazy thing because you see Matt O'Leary's graveyard. He puts it out there. He's another jinx. <laughs> he said, I that's it. I I overcame my resistance and I bought a Carl Lawson jersey. I shit you not, it was a week later. He tore his ACL. <laughs> We're like, uh, your, your jinx is real, buddy. So it gets <laughs> tough. It's tough to buy a jersey. And right, they're not cheap, man. I think um, there are the $130 versions, and then there's the $180 version. You know the difference? The $130 version, the NFL logo is kind of – it's like half on the trim here and then half on the jersey. 
Hmm. And the other one, the more expensive one, has this really nice neck collar with like a stitched V thing here. And the NFL logo is solely on the collar because it's thick enough. So yeah. I wouldn't notice that stuff. I I buy the yeah. cheap jerseys for years. I think I'm getting away with it. But there are people out there that know this stuff. Oh, they know. They're like, oh, yeah. The ones you that know. I get from China, you, you put it in the dryer drops. one time and the, and, the, and the numbers rip right off. Peel off. <laughs> <laughs> I know. You're really rolling the dice with uh, DH Gate. You know, um, Jeremy sent me a jersey years ago from uh, DH Gate. He sent me a black Becton jersey. And then that was the end of Becton. So it's like <laughs> it it was like the funeral attire. He sent you the funeral You're attire. Right. For Becton. <laughs> That's well said. That's good. So I mean, well, what do you think of the uniforms? I mean, we're we're psyched about them. I think. You, do you have any grumbles, uh, you Buffalo? Are you are you are you down with it? Did you prefer the last ones? Where are you with this whole thing? No, I like I like them better. The last ones kind of had the almost like an arcadeish look to it with the font um like i was playing nfl blitz or something and i thought like the new york in the front was kind of almost like arena football like like we know it, it's in new york and obviously the logo with some sort of jet being a part of it is cool because that was my gripe about the last uh logo where it's like you don't have jet anywhere you know like other teams like the rams there's a horn and the eagles there's a wing so getting the jet in there is pretty nice um yeah look good feel good play good i, I have no complaints i think it was good decision I think so, too. What do you think about, and Gunny, I'm curious. You're a Jersey guy, so I'm curious your thoughts, too, here. Uh, what do you think about the attempt that the Jets are making to create a symbol that's ours? You know, like the Colts have like the a, horseshoe, or the, the Dallas Cowboys have the star, the Cardinals yeah. have the bird, and the Ravens. And they they made the the Jet. They, they, they beefed it up a little bit, right? And then they yeah. made the logo, the oval with just the Jet in there. So Buffalo, you first, and then guy. What do you think of that one? I'll get. I'll, I'll pull it up. Let's take a look. Yeah, it's. Let's see. Here. Oh, I think. Oh, I think I know what you're talking about. Like the alternate one. Yeah, the, right. The alternate one. I had it here. Shit. What did I do with it? But yeah, it's like it's just the jet in a in an oval. You I like, like it. it. You you think it's gonna stick? Um. Maybe let's win some games in it, man. I'll, I'll ride the hot hand. I even have an affinity to, to the uh, the hideous Titans jerseys because we won some games with them in the in the Mark Sanchez years. Though those Wait, jerseys, what was that? I, I even have a, an affinity for the hideous Titans jerseys because we won some games with them in the Sanchez years. Those jerseys remind me of Thomas Jones running for you know seventeen hundred yards. <laughs> I have good memories in those jerseys, as ugly well, as they were. <laughs> well, I see. The thing is, I actually that's my fa- the white helmet. Like the Sanchez stuff. I didn't like when Nike took it and they made that like square thing in the front. I don't know what yeah. that was. It was like weird. It, it was like a, I don't know what they're making, like a plate or something. I don't know what the illusion they were trying to create. But that's my favorite uniform is the, is like, I feel like, especially the all whites, you know, mm-hmm. it's like the white helmet, the white jersey, the white pants, and just the, just the stripes. Like that to me is like classy old. I love when it gets dirty real easy if they're playing on real grass, which is fewer and farther between. Why can't I find this Buffalo? What the hell is going on? I had it. I had it. You're Jeremy. Can you send it to me? What Jeremy? Just, just I can't hear you. Just do it. Just, just help me out. <laughs> Fucking help me out, man. I'm I'm trying to pay attention. Just look for the uni- the the new uniform. Uh, what what'd you call it? Not all. Is it alternates? Not not alternates, right? Secondary logo or whatever. That oh, okay, yeah. Mr. Downtown checking in. Really love the new logo. Wish the chevron part can be on the hat by itself without the darn football shape. Chevron. Is that what you're calling that? It's a jet, right, Mr. Downtown? I mean, chevron is like we got like a V kind of a thing, right? It's 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 weird looking to me. I'm not going to lie to you. I think the only ones who are going to know what that is is fellow Jets fans. I called it. It's the new trash bag, right? So you can go ahead and get a hat with that logo on it. And if the Jets start to suck this year, you can still rock the hat because other people won't know you're a Jets fan, but at least other Jets fan will be able to look at you and be like, oh, you're one of us. I think it's like the new trash bag in case the Jets decide to go ahead or they start to suck this year. You can put on the hat. You're still a Jets fan, but nobody else really has to know. Um, yeah, I think it's too um, it's too vague in terms of of what it's supposed to be. Uh, and if you're not a Jets fan, you're really not going to be able to tell what it is. 
I, I want people to know that I'm a Jets fan. Win or lose, I'm, I still I'm, I'm don't even really it. see the Jet in it. I don't either. I know, like, and I've heard somebody this, else say I'm that. I'm looking at this thing, the the, the little funny. circle with go. the white line thing. Maybe I'm yeah. thinking of something else. I got it. Here we go. All right. No, it's so, it's right there. I got it, Jeremy. Top right. Jeremy looks like he's in pain, so I'm, I apologize for hurting you. All right, hold, let me let me just. I, I, it looks like the Star Trek little freaking calm thing that you got to press to go ahead and talk. We're on Star Trek. Yeah. So we're talking start. about the one on the top right. You get you right. so you're saying you don't see a jet there. Did you see? I do not. Myj Matt said he thought that was just a wing all these years, just one wing. I can't see that. Like I, I can't. Oh, trying, like from a from the top of a plane, like it's split in half. Yeah, looking down at it, split in half. I can see a wing. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, I mean, I can't mm-hmm. see it. It looks like a Lear jet to me, like a like a Concorde. Really? Let's let, let me see the Concord here. I'll I don't try see to that. This is this we got to figure. I it's it's really surprising to me. I had no idea that people couldn't see the jet. I mean, like whether or not we like. I think the the line the tail coming off of it, like the chemtrail thing that they got going on there. I think if <laughs> that's that for Aaron Rodgers. That that's for Aaron. <laughs> that's, that's what it is. That's good. <laughs> um, but I think that I like that just if the middle that wasn't the there. If it was just the jet, I think it would be better. The line is yes. what's confusing because then the right side is not complete. You know what I mean? Yeah, I agree. If they cut that little stream out the back, it would be better. Here, let me show you the Concord here. I get a picture of the Concord. It's like this thing. Here, let me let me let me do this now. Hold on. Well, we're gonna we're gonna okay, we're gonna figure this out. I I gotta do another poll. Does everybody have difficulty seeing the jet? This is what, weird. What's yeah, a, if I, I know it's a jet, then I can obviously see it. But if I just saw that with no context, I wouldn't pick out that it's a jet. But then again, I'm also not very smart. See, there it is. That's like what they're going for. It's an interesting angle, but that's what it is. Hmm. What do you think, the uh, Buffalo? Um, see, that jet. I mean, that, would you get on that thing? That thing was it broke the sound barrier. <laughs> That's what it was. So it's like a one seater. It's for one person. <laughs> no, dude, this thing, this fucking thing's huge. Look at it. Look at all the windows, Gunny. It looks like it. Yeah, but it broke the sound barrier. Yeah, you guys. How how young are you guys? You don't remember the Concord, Jerm? Hold on, I gotta get. I needed somebody my yeah. age on here, Jeremy. Can you, can yeah, you I a picture of the Ford Model T. I used, to, I, I used to, I used to, I used to hear the Concord, and I used to see the Concord every time it went by because I lived in Canarsie, not far from JFK, and the Concord went back and forth to New York to London, and it did it in like three and a half to four hours instead yeah. of six to seven. Yeah, they ended it because it was too expensive to run. I remember, like the one of the last flights ended up catching on fire on the runway or some shit. Like that. So that's not a, that's never a good sign. Yeah. But that's the kind of that's it's. I don't think they're going for the Concorde specifically, but to give you an idea of the kind of jet that they're going for here, that's what it is. So, but that's funny, man. I didn't know. All right, thank you, Jeremy. You made me feel a bit better because uh, these guys they're they're making me feel old, dude. I don't youngies, know what's going on. Youngies. It wasn't youngies. intentional. I just I didn't I wasn't tracking uh, the Concorde. You weren't. You weren't. Figuring. Let me get the logo back up. But um. So it's a funny thing because I never in a million years would have thought that people would have difficulty at least seeing that it's a jet. People, I heard people calling it a swoosh. Like, well, that weird swoosh. And I'm like, what do you mean? It's not a swoosh. I mean, that's, I've called it a nice thing. But it's a, it's a jet. A swoosh. <laughs> All right. So it's, so it's definitely weird, though. It's hard, to, it's hard to just see, you know what I mean? And kind of wear that around. I could see it on like a polo shirt or something. You know what I mean? Yeah, that would look sleek. Like a little symbol. Now, what do you think of like the, the NY with the Jets? I mean, that's that's kind of good, right? I mean, these things are kind of where we were. They're very similar to what we had previously, like this kind of a thing here. Yeah. This one. But they're kind I, of I like the Jets. I like the middle. Uh, the middle top. Uh, yeah, I like yep. that. That's the that's one. Good. That that one is the one. <laughs> I think I agree. That is That's the, the one. Because our oval thing, I mean, it's been the oval. We've had the oval the whole time. Right. right. Exactly. Our oval is just, we're, I don't know what it is. We Because like, I think we want to believe it's a football. Yeah. You know I mean? That's where that, my mind goes. <laughs> uh, it's good. It's football. Boom. So, uh, 
All right, so let's let's shift gears a little bit from the uniforms. We've we've talked it out. I'll tell you what, I'm not going to get a jersey. I I may. I have a white sauce legacy jersey, and I and I have the Quinn in that nobody will let me wear. I I might wear it. I might say screw all you guys. But if people get so mad at me, Buffalo, they're like, oh, he's going to be a Hall of Famer. And I'm like, I don't know. Maybe what do I do? Do I sell it? Is it worth something? I don't. I don't see. Gunny is like memorabilia man i should probably yeah. have a a one-on-one -on -one with gunny yeah. because i don't get it like well, am i gonna sell it someday i mean the, if it if it's worth eighty thousand dollars and it's um i mean i don't know what do i do gunny i it? hope my daughter takes it and puts it in her house when i'm long gone and oh, her children become jets fans that's what i right. passing down that the legacy is, passing on the legacy that resonates with me you're trying this is for your future generations you want to Correct. ruin their lives i'm with exactly you. i gotta <laughs> yeah. go ahead and get them on well the train. done you gotta do I that like now <laughs> you want to ruin your great grandkids <laughs> futures all right i fully support that so i'm gonna end this poll uh buffalo and gunny i i put a poll up there uh, I'd, I'd love to talk a little bit about, you know, look, it is draft season. We're drafted out a little bit. But the one thing that kind of remains is the potential trade opportunities that the Jets have, you know, and there are. And, and then obviously we can we can di dissect the players till the draft, of course. But I think uh, this still holds a little bit of interest for me because I'm, I, for one, am really rooting for a trade. I really am. I, I want a second round pick or two thirds where you, where you have the opportunity to get into the second. If you see something you like yeah. um, somebody that maybe, you know, you're, you're just, he's too close. You know, you didn't think he'd get there kind of a thing. The poll was uh, your favorite jets tra uh, trade options for the draft uh, trade up to five was one option you would and just as an example, you, uh, you, you get a fourth this year, you give a fourth this year, next year's second. Okay. Uh, trade up to eight for a third. Uh, trade back to 13, gain a third. And trade back to 19 with the Rams, gain a second and a third. So I'll end the poll. It looks like the Rams won. I'm surprised. I threw that in almost like, I don't even know why I'm putting this. Nobody's going to take it. But it won. So 42%, is that what it is? Yeah, 42% said trade back to 19 to gain a second and a third. Out of those options, Buffalo, uh, which one would you take? Or are you like, I don't want to trade. I want to stay right at 10. Where are you? If you, if it was your draft, where do you think you'd sit? Uh, I mean, 10 does feel a little bit like no man's land with the top three receivers and Joe all likely gone. Right. So at that, at that point, I, I would aggressively try to come up. If you could come up to now to five Marvin Harrison jr. That might be a little unrealistic, but if neighbors gets to six or seven, I would definitely be trying to come up. And then, um, I like the Raiders trade just because they're if they trade with you, they're probably going to take a quarterback. So then that really only leaves you two picks that you're missing out on. And right now, Denver is there. So that could be a quarterback, too. So it could essentially be one position player that comes off the board and you get um, a third round pick for your trouble. Now, the, all the way back to the Rams. I mean, it's second and a third is that's really enticing. I, I don't want to get too cute and have it be like, you know, Tyler Guyton and like Adonai Mitchell season. Uh, you know what I mean? Because I, I would like to get, I think we, we fall in love with picks this time of year, but then you look in the playoffs and it's like blue chip talent and elite players that are, are out there making a difference. So um, I guess out of all of those, I would say I like the coming up to being aggressive and coming up to five or the short trade back with the Raiders. That would be my favorite too. You know what? That's interesting. So you you would really so I mean for a next year's second and a fourth going up to five. You do you think that price is palatable? You're like absolutely no every day of the week kind of a thing. Yeah, as long as you could not not have to part with next year's first, I would do it. I mean because you're you're hoping. I mean that next year's second is is down there near sixty four, right? You That's know? what you're hoping, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> and I, and I like that you did the fourth rounder because I would like to keep seventy two. Um, I wouldn't want to, you know, go from five all the way to one eleven without a pick. And obviously, if you come up for a receiver, then you can get a a depth offensive tackle at pick seventy two. And and man, you're gonna win a lot of games with Marvin Harrison Jr. and Garrett Wilson. Yeah, that would be now. Again, I am a fan of trading back, and I really want I want in that second round because I believe that like the what the way we handled free agency, right? You know, like uh, before that, I was like. Best tackle, period. I don't give a shit. Best tackle, stop it. Like what any other conversation is dumb. 
But then we did some pretty good work in free agency. Now, but the only problem is every single one, well, Jonathan Simpson, not really, but Morgan Moses had shoulder surgery and he's, he's old. He's three years older now than when we had him. And uh, obviously Tyron Smith with the eight game average over the past nine years. Um, it's concerning. Now I'm happy. I like the group that we brought in. I love what they can bring. If they are healthy, it's going to be something else, something we haven't seen in a long time, but I'm, I'm, I'm still, I, so with what we did, it gives us some flexibility, right? So I'm really, I would, with that being there, and we brought in Mike Williams, more injury concerns, but still the potential that he has is just sick, man. If he's on the field with Garrett Wilson, it's like, again, best combo we've had since at, at least Decker and Marshall. I mean, it, it's like we haven't had anything like this yeah. in a long time. So we've done some good work. So that, to me, gives us a little bit of flexibility. I feel like this draft is so deep that if you're not dependent on somebody coming in and being like starter level, like, you know, a, a third wide receiver three, fine. But somebody like a tackle, you're, you're not dependent on them to come in and be the, the day one starter protecting your your number one asset, Aaron Rodgers. Then I'm OK with sliding back and 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 being in that, you know, Jordan Morgan uh, Guyton range. Um, I'm, I'm OK with that to give them six, eight games to kind of get their feet under them. Uh, and then have that second grab a Ricky Pearsall or a Leggett, somebody like that, who I think behind Wilson and 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 Williams, dude, he's going to be rock solid. He's going to do everything that we hope. So I I just tend to lean that way. But if the Jets decided, nope, we're going to use next year's second, and we're going up for Marvin Harrison, I would lose my marble <laughs> with excitement. That's the truth of it. Now I'm not rooting for like that's not what I would do necessarily, but holy shit, would I be excited? Uh, Gunny, where where are you with this one? If you had to pick one of those trades, what are you thinking? I I I think I'm going to go ahead and follow suit here with Buffalo on this one. I think moving up to potentially get yourself a playmaker in in the form of a a neighbors or MHJ are the only two individuals. I think if you're going to make that move, you'd make that move for. Uh, I think it's it's a hit because you're talking about a small window in which we're trying to go ahead and make this thing work with Aaron Rodgers, putting weapons around him, elite weapons like that, alongside of a guy like freaking Garrett Wilson and a, a guy like Mike Williams. The one thing they just have struggled to do over the last several years is put up points. You're not going to have a hard time doing that with these caliber of guys on the roster. So if I had to go ahead and pick one, I would definitely do the move up. Um the trade back, I'm not going to lie to you. If we're going to trade back, and I think at that point you're going to miss out on potentially a Dunze, um, maybe even for Shanu. Obviously, Alt is gone and the other two guys. I'm not opposed to the the dropping back to the 19th um, pick and grabbing a second and a third. Um, mm -hmm. I really love this wide receiver class, and there's a couple of guys uh, offensive tackle-wise I think that could be uh, you know a project in the third or the second, and you accumulate another second or and the third on top of that. I <laughs> I, I like Brian Thomas uh, there. Um, I like Adane Mitchell, a guy like Ladd McConkey. I like him a lot, too. I think that one of those late um, swings at wide receiver mm. could also be uh, an immediate impact player or, or at least a, a starter on in that wide receiver room. So I would rather accumulate more assets if we're going to do so and drop to that 19th pick. But, again, if I had to make a decision and the options were as, as they lay out right now, I'll move up. I'll move up and go grab MHJ or Malik Neighbors. I'll tell you what, getting like so you look at it like this is it Marvin Harrison, right? More you got Marvin Harrison, or you can have AD Mitchell, Guyton. Like, so if you slid back to 19, you can have AD Mitchell, or maybe even Brian Thomas might be there. I don't think so, but he might be there by at, at 19. You could take him, you can get Guyton, you can get Christian Haynes, and you can come away with Malachi Corley or Malik Washington or something like that. I don't know, man. I don't know, guys. I think I'm, I'm still going MHJ. <laughs> you can't. Hey, they can't all be on the field at the same time. So. Yeah, they can. <laughs> what are you talking about? Man, I'd, I'd rather everybody. have. I'd rather have MHJ <laughs> if 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 that's the option. But I wouldn't be mad with option B either. Don't get it twisted. I wouldn't be you upset with both the options. I'm going to show you guys something too. I'm going to show you. Uh, you might have seen this on Twitter. Now I can't necessarily read this to its detail, but the overall point is interesting. And then I see some super chats that I'll get to. Um, in just a second here, but uh, take a look at this thing. Did you guys see this on uh, on Twitter today? 
It's uh, this is by Seth no. Walter. So what this it. is, this is the team trading up versus the team trading back the the value that they've gotten out of it. And they pointed out that the team trading back has a disadvantage because a lot of times or trading. Well, yeah, trading back has a disadvantage because um, I forget why. But anyway, they said that. But so let's just look at it straight up. So the the team trading up, the value tends to go lower more of the time. Then the team trading, the team trading up, the the lower the value is significantly lower. They tend to lose the trade more than the team that slides back a little bit, picks up the value, get the extra pick or whatever, and still lands a first round pick, a couple picks later or whatever. One that stands out to me is when the Bills traded up for Sammy Watkins. He was the he was the Marvin Harrison of that draft. He was far, and that was a strong wide receiver class. It had Mike Evans, it had OBJ and uh, Brandon Cooks and 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 others, Calvin Benjamin, a lot of those guys. Um, the Bills decided to use two firsts and jump up to grab Sammy Watkins, bypassing OBJ and and Mike Evans. And I mean, Sammy Watkins was fine. He was a good receiver, but he was off the Bills in four years, and and he was just kind of a good receiver where. OBJ was elite for a while. And Michael, uh, you know, Mike Evans is is still among the the, the top wide receivers in the NFL. Um, so it's an interesting thing. Now, it's not that it, you know, your trade up can't work, but in more times, I think it's 78%. The trading up team got the shit end of the stick. Isn't that interesting to think about? Because you think you're going up for that blue chipper, like Buffalo said, and they're they're you know, they're exciting up there and um, but how many times do we see like the the first overall pick? Like, look at the Carolina Panthers last year. They traded all that capital to go up there and get young, and then they passed. But I gotta play league. devil's advocate. All right, right. Man. Like, how skewed is this towards quarterbacks? Again, the most important position in all of sports. It's also got the highest miss rate. And the majority of times when you're trading Ooh. up, you're usually trading up to get a quarterback. That's that's been the norm. So how much of this data is potentially skewed by that fact well and that's where remember before when i said i can't really read this that's right okay. where am i uh that's right where i'm gonna i'm gonna start saying i don't know what the fuck fair I'm enough fair about. enough so, okay good to go good to go <laughs> <laughs> it's just the reference yeah. point right that's a good point yeah. though so how many of these are quarterbacks like people like you know the niners trading up for trey lance or something like that because that overvalue of the player for the value of the position right. can really skew things uh, it's an interesting thing to look at, though. Um, you know, I don't think Marvin Harrison's going to bust out, but it happens, man. You know, it, it happens every year. Look at the uh, uh, White, the wide receiver in the 2000 and what was that? 2015 draft when we got oh, Leo. Kevin White. Kevin White. Yeah. I mean, let me tell you, that was the guy I wanted in that draft. I, I was like yeah. a little bit bent out of shape that we took Leo. Um, but uh, he ended up sucking some serious. Balls. Yeah. He was trash. You know I mean? he was trash. Days, yeah. Well, even I, I tell you what, you know, the Jets. AVT, they could have stayed put and took Christian Darisaw. That's also a good point. And kept two third round picks. Now we yeah. love AVT, but you know what I mean? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, right. But in terms of the value, I mean, he's uh, elite. Value. Right. Nobody's going to say he's not great. We love him. All the right, but it's fucking, we never get to see him. So, yeah. So, right. And that was the thing then, too. Like, I caught a lot of shit for being upset with that trade, right? I wasn't like, I loved ABT in that draft. So I wasn't mad about the player, but I was like, man, two thirds to jump up when, yeah. you know, I liked, I think lot. Slater was, was the, uh, Dara saw like a lot of those guys that I really liked were right there. So, and then we could have taken, you know, what, who I would have taken was Creed Humphrey. Now by, when you look at where he was drafted, I would have arguably overdrafted him, but I would have probably taken Creed Humphrey at 23 where we were. And we'd be happy with that. You know what I mean? So it's, uh, I Creed was look, one I of got, the like Jets Twitter knowing better than the Jets GMs classics. Like there's been a few oh, of those yeah. names where like we were all like right on obsessed on the same page. Yep. They're like immediate yeah. hits. And it's yeah. like, so it seems so easy. It's like, why? <laughs> it seems so easy, Buffalo. <laughs> and then he goes to the Chiefs and it's like, oh my God. <laughs> oh, yeah. And this is what it, that's a great example of one of, of, of a player, of a scenario where like I've been, nerding out on this stuff since before the internet right like and like get ordering uh you guys won't remember this because you don't even know what the hell the concord is but we used to have to order these like paper magazines with like draft 
Stuff yeah. on it. You know yeah, kind of like, like fantasy newspapers. football now. Yeah, I remember those. Yeah, remember right. Those. So like Jets Confidential, which is now online, uh, Lieberfeld, like that was a like a paper rag. You know what I mean? That I used to love. I used to go into Quick Check and get that one. But um, so what I've been looking at, I'm I'm not an expert either. Like definitely not. Like you got the Dom C's and Joe Blewett to the world. They break shit down that like be to a level where I I just can't. I I don't see what they see, nor do I have the knowledge base that they have. But I am no, I, but I'm not an idiot either. And I've, and I do know what I'm talking about at least to an extent. Right. But going back to like, let's just say 2000, 2001, like that area, I have been making my draft. Like, here's what we should do. And let me tell you, man, so many times, dude, I, it just seems so easy to me. I'm like, dude, he's, he's right there and you guys get oh you overthink it and you grab brian thomas who was fine he's a good player over ed reed it just makes no sense and we're screaming come on and they just don't do it you know so and creed humphrey's a great example of that trey smith was another one uh who was the tight end last year that we were in love with what the hell was Laporta. his name again Laporta. no no the oh, him too the year, the year I, before mcbride yeah he was he was our second round pick in every friggin' mock draft that we did on the yeah, Monday Trey night mock. Yeah, Trey he's nice. He had a good year last year. Dude, he's, he's a stud. He did. He's, a, he's probably better than Brock Bowers. Actually, we should probably trade. We should yep. draft Brock Bowers and trade him for Trey McBride. <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> oh my God, for for Trey McBride in a seventh. <laughs> yeah, oh, that'd be the best. V man checking in. What's up, dude? Good to see you. He says, uh, "Hey, Green Bean. You know the guy who designed the Jets logo played bass with Frank Zappa at the concert that inspired the song Smoke on the Water." V man, I did not know that, and that is rock solid info, dude. That's I, I thoroughly enjoy factoids like that, man. Didn't know Buffalo. Did you know that? Did you know? That the guy who designed the logo played bass with Frank Zappa at the concert that inspired the the um the um deep purple song Smoke on the Water. Did you no, know did you have that? I'm not even gonna fact check it because V Man is the truth. V Man knows yeah. what he's talking about. He does when he's awake. He when, when he's, he's awake when he's up. <laughs> he's up now, and that's the good part about it. Gunny. Did you know that one? Did you do you even know what uh, you know what smoke on the water I have, is? Nope. I'm sitting here just like I'm gonna just let you guys take it just take this one. I don't know what the song is. I don't I don't even know who the guy is who designed the logo for the Jets. Yeah, nor do like, I. What's his name? Okay, Let's yeah. take a guess. Is his name Ed? I want I want to say it's probably Johnny. Johnny or John. Scott. Jonathan. Jonathan. Oh, what do you got, Scott. Buffalo? The guy's name who designed the Jets logo. What Brock. <laughs> <It's> Brock. <laughs> <laughs> what's his name, V man? The New York Jets logo. I, I oh, got it. Jim here. Jim Ponds. It says here Bill Parcells. What? That's what it says. That's first thing. Jim Ponds. Is that what you, you gave him a last name too? He's yeah. He just said Jim Ponds. V oh, Jim did. Ponds. I thought you were just. Ex 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 oh no no no. Yes, no, no. I would have never guessed that Jim Ponds. <laughs> oh, that was great. That's a, that's awesome, V Man. Now, V Man, what do you know about Mike Keneally? That's the question I have for you, an old Frank Zappa uh, protege. Talk to me about Mike Keneally, and then we're gonna. I'll even entertain just getting on the phone with you and, and nerding out because I love me some Frank Zappa, dude. Uh, all right, so good shit, V Man. Thank you, Junio Rudy, checking in. Distorted Pepsi logo. That's all I see <laughs> with the jet. Uh, well, hey, you know, Pepsi, I'll tell you what, that was a very, very successful ad campaign, Junio. So uh, now I, I saw on the chat, I, I wanted to get to some of your comments. I, I neglected, so please forgive me. But there was a lot of people saying that, um, you know, some a lot were saying, I, I can't see how people don't see the jet. That's where I am. It's, it, it's interesting to me to hear that. You know what I learned today, Buffalo? This is an interesting day because now I'm learning this jet thing. But I also learned. I had to talk to somebody at, at, at my site about talking about their salary. I said, hey, we don't talk about salaries. And so there's a young person, you know, uh, Gen Z, maybe, I don't know, 25 years old. And One they said, those. why? I said, well, because we don't talk about it. I said, at work, you don't talk about politics, religion, and salaries. And they were like, why? It makes no sense to me. I said, because what good can... Wait, I said, wait, are you being... Are you joking? Are you... Is this fucking... What are you doing here? <laughs> but I found out that there is, she was looking at me. She said, are you joking? 
Like, mm-hmm. what are we talking about? If there is such a generational gap. Did you know that that's what people do now? They come right in. They go, what are you making? I'm making. What are you making? That's bullshit. Yeah. You're making more than me. And then they yeah. go complain. I'm like, <laughs> what? What happened? I told, I had to tell somebody, well, you know why they're making more than you? It's because they're significantly better than you. At this job. <laughs> they're better at their job than you are. Yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. what happens. <laughs> yeah. I hate to say, I mean, look, you're the, if you must, you're going to force the can open you're gonna find out what's inside dude here's here's what it is they're better they're, they're so much better than you and, and now look you're you're feelings hurt. <laughs> i'm overpaying and you now, in <laughs> fact yeah in fact you we're gonna we're gonna have to shave a little bit off that you're, you're, you're making right. how much whoa yeah. whoa oh I, I didn't realize that is an error on our part we'll fix that <laughs> oh, right away oh that's so good so it's i weird. had a job it's do just... that to me they made a mistake and then they came to me at the end of the year and they were like hey you actually owe us like a couple thousand dollars and i was like hey here's my two weeks notice here's my two week notice <laughs> yeah <laughs> they wanted the money that's back like... can you believe that because they made the yeah you're like find me dude <laughs> find me <laughs> You may you may see what looks like a shape of my body in a puff of smoke in a few yeah, seconds. That is it. Yeah, That's I'm gonna it. be on that Concord yeah. jet, baby. <laughs> I'm be in That's, so good. That's so good. You know, uh, one time I went and bought uh, a Chevy Colorado, like when they first came out, the first year. It was a hot truck, and I and I was negotiating and everything, and then I and I and I paid. I got a, I got a good deal, and then I, there was all this confusion. I signed the papers and everything. And then there was all this confusion that I actually got the deal and they were so mad for a significantly better truck. Like, so I, it was all midnight blacked out, like the black wheels It had a lift in, you know, a lift package in the back. It had the Tanu cover on it. It had these fucking fog lights and shit. And they were all mad. I had, we had all assigned already and they realized they sold me the wrong truck and they were trying to say well you know we got a blah it's actually i'm like uh uh-uh, uh man it says right here that's your signature so i was actually on the work. side of that one but yeah they tried they tried to go ah oh, you know actually and they they pulled the black truck i'm like ooh that is better that's so <laughs> nice i didn't even see that truck <laughs> that was good all right jets mets checking in what's up buddy he says i'll always associate our last unis with gases opening press conference and his huge bug eyes, PTS. <laughs> well, I think that's appropriate, Jets Mets. That's what it is. This is the stamp, in my opinion. This is the stamp of the that the Gase era is actually really truly over, right? Buffalo, do you have that association? What do you? What do you? These last lo- these last uniforms. Is it Gase to you, or is it Gase is long gone? Yeah, I think that along with like Becton and and Mims being, you know, kind of out of the way, I think we're definitely fully entrenched into the new era for sure. His stat and Darnold's gone. So there's really I don't think there's anybody left really besides like CJ Mosley. Um, even on the roster, Maybe. like what CJ and Quinn in. Yeah, I think that's Quinnen. it. Yeah, that's it. Oh, and Hennessy, of course. Right. Hennessey that's the jersey you should get. It's the only one. I mean, it's a it's a slam dunk. <laughs> He's a constant. He's a constant. <laughs> he's sticking oh, around. Roster. <laughs> he's the highest paid. I think he's the highest paid long snapper in the NFL. Yeah. Currently, yeah, yep. Good. Well, he better not bring that shit up. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. Like, whoa, wait a second. Can we, can we have a check? He's getting paid how much? <laughs> to do what? Wait till they find uh, out how much Zach Wilson is making. <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, you know yep. it that is part. always funny to me, though, that a long snapper is its own position. I mean, I, obviously it is because every team has one, but it's. Uh, I find it me- just mesmerizingly difficult to absorb the idea. My wife, put, my wife's brain exploded when she found that out. There was a different guy who snaps the ball to the punter than snaps the ball to the quarterback. She was like, "Wait, are you kidding me?" She's yeah. like, "So what would happen if they put the center out there?" I'm like, "He would mess it up. The ball would be six inches the other way, and the whole <laughs> thing would be kiboshed." She's like, "You got to be kidding me." It's a skill. It's, it's a skill set. It's a you got to have it. They got that perfect spiral. Just right back to the guy. He holds the kick. And whatever. It's like, I, yeah, but it's, it's. I mean, your wife's right. It's, it seems just bizarre <laughs> that there's not a center in the league that can figure this out. There's not one. Nobody. They're like, I not enough. Not willing to risk I don't it. long snap. No. Yeah. That's where I draw the line, dude. I'm not. I don't. I don't talk to punters. All right. Not a piece of meat. Yeah. <laughs> I don't talk to little tiny, uh, you know, kickers. I don't talk to those guys. They're they're beneath me. Pass that so off I to don't... the other peasants. A long snapping peasant. Yeah. It's a it's a weird thing, man. 
But uh, yeah, dude, I don't know, man. So this is uh, let, let me ask you this, Buffalo. So up until the last year, right? So I, I think you know the majority of Jets fans going into um, let me get that off. Sorry. Uh, so the majority of Jets fans, not all of us, of course, but I think the majority of Jets fans were kind of in Joe Douglas's corner uh, up until. Aaron Rod- well, the Mike McDonald pick was weird. We didn't really bolster the offensive line. So, like, last offseason was weird, right? We got Re- uh, Randall Cobb, Alan Lazard, McCall Harbin. It was like, okay, Aaron Rodgers, you know, is, is a big fish. And we got Wes Schweitzer and, and the guy Cologne. But we didn't really do much. And then we got Dalvin Cook, which was exciting name name brand stuff. But um, I think the, the lion's share of Jets fans fell off the Joe Douglas wagon. Throughout the season last year, a lot wanted his head uh, at the end of the season. They wanted uh, Joe Douglas and Salah, uh, or at least Joe Douglas to get fired or whatever. But it seems right now, all he had to do was go out and get a few offensive linemen and Mike Williams. And it seems like a lot more people are feeling good about I I've seen a lot like, well, Joe Douglas will win the trade. Like that narrative is back. Where do you stand with Joe Douglas? Are you, did you fall off the wagon? Were you never on the wagon? Are you back on the wagon? Where, where, how do you see that whole thing with him? Um, I was really encouraged after the 2022 draft class and then really discouraged after 2023 free agency because, I mean, even at the time, it was like Lazard, like Cook, and, and not cutting Carl Lawson even after you drafted Will McDonald, who I like McDonald. I just think the resource allocation was... Um, was dumb. I think, you know, if we could, re- if they could redo it, they would have taken a receiver and paid Huff. I don't care what they tell me that that's what they would have done if they could redo it. Um, but I like the off season that they've had. And I, you know, I understand that there's injury risk with a lot of these players, but I would rather like a, an elite player, like Tyron Smith on a pay as you go deal one year deal. than these like Albatross Tomlinson, Uzama Lazard contracts where it's like, Oh my God, when can we cut this guy? Like six weeks into it, it's not going to be like that. It's going to be okay. We have elite upside with these players. And then you draft guys to be like pipeline guys in depth behind them. I think on paper it is. And I say on paper because I, I, you know, whenever you say the roster is good, it's like, we haven't done anything. And it's like, dude, we don't play a game for five months. I don't know what you want me to talk about. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but on paper, it's probably the most complete roster since the late nineties. If you factor in like weight in quarterback play, because obviously the last time we were good, it was like Sanchez. Um, now, at the same time, I think this is the year where process has to meet results. So at the, if this year, no matter if they don't make the playoffs, I think they're probably all gone no matter what happens. I think that's a realistic expectation. You know, you get two swings at um, a quarterback, one being a massive trade for Hall of Fame, another one being a second overall pick. And if you don't get it done with either of those two, it's just kind of how the NFL goes. They're both probably done. Yeah, you see, now, but what if Aaron Rodgers says – I'm going to stay like, let's say this, let's say we get a 10 win season. Maybe we squeak in or lose, or we just, uh, just on the outside looking and we get 10 wins and Aaron Rodgers is coming back. Tyrod Taylor's coming back. Ty- Tyron Smith, whatever. Do you think that that saves him? Like Aaron um, Rodgers alone saying I'm coming back. I get, I guess it could, because then you're in a situation where like what, regime is going to want to sign on for just a one-year lease with like 42 year old Aaron Rodgers so maybe you just ride it out one more year like in that scenario where it's like okay nine or ten wins I think if it's seven or less or something they're probably gone no matter what um I guess it could it's hard I don't know I just think if he's honestly if he Aaron's healthy I think we're going to be good like I, I don't I don't envision a world in which like Aaron Rodgers is plays 15 games and the Jets suck so I think it's just he's healthy and we win a lot of games and we're all good or he kind of breaks down. And then that the whole Rogers solid Douglas all together just kind of is done. You know, I think uh, that's kind of I I'm there, too. I, it's like I find it hard to believe like last year they gave us entirely too many primetime games. Yeah. Way too many. Right. I mean, you got to, you got to fucking, you know, you let the pendulum kind of hit the middle before you go to the other side. We had none for a decade. And then it's like, give them every single opportunity. But it's like, you saw the NFL had bought in, right? Most of the pundits out there bought in when we came out, you know, they put us on Monday night, opening day, September 11th. 
And it was the most viewed game in NFL history up to that point. Um, the entire league, other than people who were like throwing darts, they wanted you to, you know, they hate Aaron Rodgers or whatever it might be. Everybody bought in. He goes down and all, and exposes all the holes. But now it's like we bolster those and he comes in. I'm, this, I'm right there with you. I think even last year, if Aaron Rodgers is there, Tigo brings it up all the time. Tigo's here. What's up, Tigo? Good to see you. I saw you come in. Um, you know, the Jets, as porous as the offensive line was, they were giving 2.5 seconds last year on average. You know what I mean? So Zach and Tim Boyle, like they're truly bad. Like not that the offensive line was was good, but they were good enough that if the quarterback could just make some things happen on a consistent basis, we win. So we're a nine win team. And I think with Aaron Rodgers there, I still think even just everything's the same last year, but Aaron Rodgers makes it the, the season like he usually does. I think we make the playoffs last year. I mean, well, I think we're 10 wins. Uh, am I, am I drunk? No, I mean, I think it's hard to like, it's hard to, we're not talking about, you know, Aaron Rodgers to Tyrod Taylor, or Teddy Bridgewater, Jacoby Brissett. We're talking Aaron Rodgers to like the worst, like Tim Boyle. And I've seen a lot, like I've seen Bryce Petty. I've seen whatever McElroy, like Tim Boyle might be the worst player. I've a quarterback I've ever seen play start multiple games for this team. So even if, even Atlanta, we might beat Atlanta if Zach plays instead of freaking Boyle. That might get, you know, because I know. And the thing is, people were telling, oh, it wouldn't matter if he had Joe Montana behind that offensive line. And I'm here to tell you it would. It, uh, Joe Montana versus Tim Boyle would make a little bit of a difference. I'm sorry to tell you, like, quarterback always matters. And I do think if it, I think if we just had, like, scrub no name backups, all Jet fans would be in agreement with that. But because it was our second overall pick, because it was Zachy. I think there was a lot of emotions tied up in that. And I think that, and, and I think people were coming to defense because he's a young kid and he's getting blamed a lot. But I think if it was just like, if we just went from Rogers to Simeon, everyone would have been like, Oh, well, yeah, of course. Like we have a horrible quarterback. We're not winning a lot of games. I mean, easily the Patriots this is the first Patriots game where look, dude, Zach couldn't hit water from a boat. It is what it is. The offensive line was actually decent in that game, right? That's a yeah. win. Falcons game win Easy. Raiders yeah. Raiders game. Uh, win did that I mean that's already the playoffs right there. I mean, yep, just like that. So, I and look, I'm not saying we make the freaking Super Bowl. Uh, all right, we probably we probably we're not going to beat the Ravens or the Chiefs with that offensive line. But um, yeah, you're you're probably a playoff team, and not even. I mean, to factor in uh, the defense probably playing better because they're not off the field. There's the ripple effects of having no quarterback, and just a quarterback who mentally can go in there and like. And and make adjustments to the line of scrimmage and and know what he's looking at and not I don't know it just would have been it would have been a completely different sport than what we witnessed and I think that's lost that was like lost on some of us and we didn't even get to see it like even if we got to see like a month of Rogers and then oh okay that's what it looks like but it was taken from us in four plays man it's so cruel yeah mm. the cruelest <laughs> like it, it, you know the Jets curse is a very very real thing right and you know we had. So many people, myself included, like I am so bought into the that the Jets curse is real. Like I've just seen it so many times. But even hard, thick-headed, like you know, cynical me, I started believing. Like you know what, dude? The, especially that that run into the stadium with the flag and and every I was and the Brees Hall run. I'm like, dude. We are going to blow the doors off this fucking league. And it was like, for not a core, like even the Vinny Testaverde Achilles, I thought that was the worst thing that could ever happen because that was a Super Bowl year too. We were picked by everybody to win the Super Bowl that year, 1999. He made it till the second, almost a halftime. You know what I mean? Like, and I was like, we didn't even make it a whole half. Four plays. There's, I mean, the Jets curse just said, yep, yeah, you just wait. I got something for you. You just wait. Go ahead, cheer him. It's good. <laughs> Get I just, excited. Feel good yeah. about life. I want this to start. Was, like, was wait, really not something. yet. Not yet. <laughs> and now. <laughs> yeah, there it is. is. When, there it is. Oh, there it is. <laughs> yeah, man. Because like, but like it was, and we all noticed it too. Is like we had the Brees Hall pop off to the left side. Then he throws the ball to Conklin. It's a miss, but we get a we get a, a defensive holding, which we never get, especially like right out of the gate. We just never get. I'm like, oh my god, I was screaming, that's the Aaron Rodgers effect. Man. I was all boasty and shit. I was all confident and bloated with pride. You know what I mean? And then it was like you all of a sudden you saw him just running for his life. I was like, all right, well, that needs to settle down. Like we that, you know, 
and it, it just that was what it yeah. was. If he, I don't, it's painful shit. But Buffalo, it is nine oh three. You promised us an hour, man. So I want to thank you uh, for hanging out, man. It was nice to have you on here, man. You know, you're a, you're a good guy to talk to. So uh, I really do appreciate it, man. Thank you for coming on. Appreciate it, guys. You have a good night. Yep, Buffalo's uh, information is in the chat or in the description, of course. You know who he is. Buffalo Jets fan, give him a sub. Thanks again, buddy. Have a good night, man. There he goes. Buffalo Jets fan hanging out with us. Uh, that was fun. Yeah, Gunny, that was uh, that was the yeah. first time. Look at that. It was nice. That's surprising to me. I, I just it feel like... Just, we know, tried. We tried. Yeah. I actually went on his channel a couple weeks ago. I think I might have told you. We set up like 3 o'clock on Sunday, Saturday or whatever. And I was all ready for it. And then I got into this video game. That's what he was saying. Uh, I was playing my son in the fucking video game. Uh -huh. And I suck at it, dude. Like, I, I used to be dominant in this game. And I haven't played it in years. And I was just playing the video game. My alarm went off for the thing. And I just, I heard the alarm. And I was frustrated. And I just hit stop. And I was playing. And then an hour, four o'clock, I went, <gasps> and I looked at the clock. And I'm like, oh, my God. And I texted him. I'm like, dude, like, we just can't do it. But then he said, he said let's go live now. I said, let's do it. So, oh, man. so, yeah, it's nice to get him on here because, uh, you know, look, he's 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 one of us, man, you know, and uh, he, he, up there and up there in enemy territory like you in your house. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> you know? uh, so, Island. Going, Island. At least it's not Pats or Buffalo fans. That's right? true. It could you know be worse. I mean? At least it's not a division rival. I, I don't know right. how Buffalo does it, man. He's right there in enemy territory uh, on an island by himself. With with the the three time AFC East division winners as well, so it's only adds more insult to injury. Yeah, Buffalo's a real one though. He's a real one. Yeah, yeah, he's the goods. Uh, hold on. so I'm gonna put a poll up there to follow up on what we were talking about before uh, about the Jets logo. I, I want to see what you guys think, and then we'll we'll just kind of uh, get your thoughts on that one because I, I I neglected to do so before we transition to another topic and and. Uh, so uh, what do you guys see in that in that logo, man? I'm real curious because it's blowing my mind that people can't see what I see up here, this thing. So yeah. let us know. Uh, Sodak checking in, Gunny. He says, J.D. is the best GM in Jets history. Yes, he blew last, he blew last season. Sorry. Yes, he blew last offseason. And he, and he hired Salah, but had an all-time draft, trades well, and built a Super Bowl team from ashes. I, I have to say I agree now, but I am one who likes to fancy myself somebody who calls it like it is, right? Now, I'm emotional too, and I hold on to some players, and and it happens to the best of us. But I think overall, it's like, you know, when people, they, you know, like, so like, I, I want, I like Joe Douglas, and then he does something stupid, and I go, guy's a fucking asshole, he should have done that. People go, but you're a Joe, you, you said you liked him. Yeah, I did, but now he did something stupid, so now I, I want to talk about that, and I don't like that. So you can you can just be real and say like it's like look I love my wife right do I need to go any further with that one I love my wife but you know it doesn't mean I want a <laughs> divorce you know what I mean so you you can you can call it like it is and I had a lot of issues with last year I really you know it wasn't just Will McDonald that was the icing on the cake I was like what the f you know and then yeah, Tipman saved was, a little mm -hmm. bit because I I really wanted a center last year now I was leaning. Uh, John Michael Schmitz, but I uh, Schmidt, but uh, but uh, Tipman was way up there, you know. So I was happy with that pick. But like before that, like I just talked about, I thought the whole off season was drab. I'm like, what are we doing? Like, why are we? We're not addressing. We had a massive tackle issue the year before, and uh, offensive line, but particularly tackles, and we did nothing. We brought in no one. Uh, we brought in Billy Turner. It was like I don't know. So. It almost yeah. seemed like they brought in Aaron Rodgers and they thought to themselves, we win, right? We win. Um, and we got enough. It's 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 it. We 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 kind of hit the jackpot on that one. So uh, I, I agree. I think I think in terms of what he has built at one Jets drive, you can't deny it. We went from an expansion level to a roster to a roster worthy enough of getting guys like Aaron Rodgers to come over here, Tyron Smith to go ahead and come here on a incentive laden deal. You got Mike Williams on the roster. Like these things don't just happen. Yeah. Aaron Rodgers being here is an impact, but Aaron Rodgers was drawn to this roster as well. So I, I I'm on the boat of believing that even if the jets had a, a bad season this year, that it could be more along the lines of solid gets got and gets chopped and they give JD another shot at it. I, I just, I don't see, 
where you can look at the body of work and not clearly state that he's built a very, very competitive roster, that he hasn't built a Super Bowl winning uh, caliber roster. So I think because of that, like if it if it came down to it, it wouldn't shock me at all if you saw J.D. chop um, or uh, Woody chop Salah and give J.D. another shot at another uh, head coach. That would be interesting. Uh, but I, I wouldn't be blown away by that, too. I mean, there is that thought that the whole – they're all tied, right? They're all tied together. But I think that could happen, you know? Because, look, la- you take last year's offseason aside, it, it's really an, it's an anomalous thing because his free agency hasn't been very robust. He's not hit much in free agency. You have DJ Reed. You got Tyler Conklin. Other than that, I mean, Dwayne Brown was good that first year. Not great, but he was good. Conklin is a major whiff. Um, I mean, Uzoma's a huge whiff. Carl Lawson was solid. You know, we had the Achilles thing. He was never quite the same, but his year Quince two, was he was a solid. Good, a good yeah, he was good. He was good, man. Solid. Not what we'd hoped, but it's definitely good. And if he just maintained that for a few years, I think it would have been. A, but he's gone. You know what I mean? Last year, he was a healthy scratch the, almost the whole year. And then you got Lazard, and even before that, you had you know all those guys. The uh, what the hell was the guy's name? Um, the the cornerback, uh, Desir, right? Pierre Desir. Oh yeah, Pierre Desir. You know, um, you had all those guys, and so like none of them worked out. You know, like just none of them. So it's weird. And then his his twenty twenty draft class, Ashton Davis is the only guy left, and he's on a one year contract. Right. The 21 draft class is Zach Wilson, who's gone. He's going to be gone. He's a fucking complete bust. Yep. ABT, who's great, but like we talked about before, we never see him. So we're yeah. hoping, but if he's out another year, if we miss him for like six games plus, dude, you gotta you gotta start looking out. You, you can't elsewhere. Yeah, you, you just can't depend on him. But yeah. it sucks to say, but then you had what? So then you got uh, uh, Elijah Moore. He's gone. Michael Carter. Mm-hmm. He's gone. Jason Pinnock, he's gone. Sherwood's still here. I, I'm a big Sherwood guy, but he hasn't been able to kind of – I mean, I, th- I think he's entrenched at linebacker three, which is fine, right. um, which is which is fine, right? Um, uh, Hamza Nasruddin, I, I was really high on him, man. I thought he was the steal of the draft. He's gone. Bryce Hall from 2020, he's gone. Um, but I'm starting to do 2021. Jonathan Marshall, he's gone. Brandon Eccles and Michael Carter the second. Michael Carter the second is the biggest hit in that whole draft, without question. Yeah, if ABC true. was healthy, different story. But it's like, but you look at it. Then you got 2022. He's got those four slam dunks and Michael Clemens, who's a good role player. Um, Max Mitchell's. I mean, we don't know what's up, Jeremy. Were you waving me in? No, I wasn't okay. waving in. I thought I was scratching like my it. eye. All right, I'm I'm scratching my eye, holding a pencil. All right. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> oh, Jeremy. I thought he because he does stuff, you know, and it's very important. I respect when he wants to get my attention. I respect it. He's got something. You know what I mean? It's important. He's used to shine the light. I would see this light. It would like I'm like, whoa, what's happening? He'd be like, I'm starving. <laughs> yeah, there's the light. He's showing me the light. There it is. Look, this, this is what I see. Show everybody again. I do this. That's what I I'm like, what's going on? Something's on fire. An emergency. Uh, so uh, there you go. Thank you, Jeremy. But um, but it's like, but yet here we are. We have a team that there was was solid enough that Aaron Rodgers wanted to come here, and that the entire NFL thought we were a, a legitimate Super Bowl contender last year. So where the fuck is everybody coming from? How if we if he keeps missing in free agency and he keeps missing in the draft? How it how is it, Gunny? What's going on? And where's everybody so, coming from? So I'll say this, right? Um, I I think when it comes to his free agent acquisitions, with the exception of last year, really, I think the majority of the ones he's made, everyone and their mom thought they were great additions, right? You, we thought Lakin Thompson was gonna be a nice hit. We thought Corey Davis was gonna be a nice hit. Um, the CJ yeah. Uzama one, we thought, hey, he's going to bring leadership and and uh, a playoff experience to the roster. So I think that, yes, in essence, it all failed. But it wasn't as if he was just pulling bums off the street and and having them come, unless it was the offensive line. Uh, that, that's different. But it was, he was pulling bums off the street um, and bringing them in. A lot of those guys became Jets and forgot how to play football. They just forgot. I, I don't know how else to explain it, uh, but they were – Pro Bowlers, or or they were legitimate starters at the NFL level, and then they got here and they just forgot how to play ball. Um, 
So I think real when quick, it comes down to quick, that, hold the thought. Yeah. I just want to say, I just want to say what's up to Jake. It's good oh, to see up, Jake? Jake. I think somebody's trying to raz Jake, and Jake, Jake is just saying straight up, man. I drink Same tears me. for breakfast, so yeah. <laughs> he feeds off. That's of it. the best. That's the best. <laughs> Fucking uh, Knoble, dude. That's it. You know what's funny? You know, really funny thing that it, it, it went by everybody. Jake, if you're still here, it it went by everybody. Jake, I'll throw you the link real quick. Just if, if you want to come on and talk, no, no pressure. Um, I'll throw it in Twitter. Uh, but one of the things that snuck by everybody in that whole um, conversation about Knoble with uh, Lane Train and, and everybody is that when he was looking it up, he goes, I looked up Knoble and all I found was this theme park or some shit like that. And literally, dude, that's one of my favorite theme parks in the entire country. It's a, it's kind of obscure. It's in Pennsylvania, and what it is, Gunny, it's like they collect and restore all the old carnival type rides from our childhoods, and they're all there in their glory. So it's this, it's the biggest collection in the world. It's like a, it's like a museum, but you can still ride everything from your childhood and then on top of that they build their own roller coasters and they keep winning these awards like it's just this little fucking rinky dink park in the middle of the mountains of pennsylvania and it's this amazing place let me let me get to jake real quick i'm just gonna um hold on i want to send this just in case uh here i'm sending it to you is this i'm sending it to the not the jake asman show the other one it's just because let me see here it's just what it is. I think we're talking on there, Jake. So if you want to come on and, and talk about that real quick, but no pressure, man. If you're busy, if you're eating pasta ronis or some shit like that, I don't know. But uh, it's in there. But uh, that was a funny thing because did you see that whole Knobel thing, Gunny? I on, on no, I have not yet. Oh my! God. I got to go ahead and go back. I've been trying to catch up to see what I've missed because I've heard it nonstop since I've been watching his show. So I know I missed an episode somewhere where this was a thing. So I got to go back and, and figure out what I missed. Well, it's real. It's one of the best. And Gator did. I mean, dude, what Gator did with it is is magical. I mean, it's I actually I texted. I was watching it and like I was almost at. I just I texted. I said, dude, like what I'm watching. I can't even believe what I'm seeing, dude. Like it is. <laughs> it's the best TV. It's like tell it's on TV. Now, that said, by comparison, I want to show you guys. Tigo and I did a show last night. I'm not sure if you guys know about this. Um, but Tigo and I did a show and I'll try to, let me see if I can get it here. Uh, we did a, a really amazing thing. I'll bring Tigo on real quick. Um, seven more days, Jerome real quick. So Tigo and I, Hey Tigo, how you doing buddy? Hello. Uh, let me, let me get this up. Let me see if I can find this thing from, uh, from last night, but Tigo and I did a show last night. And uh, I think the best thing I can say about it was it was a big mistake. Right, Tigo? What do you think? <laughs> we, we, we came out of the gate pretty, pretty rocky there, didn't we? Yep. Let me see here. Where is it? So is this one. Yeah, okay. Here it is. So uh, let me try to show you guys this. So this is the, I'm going to show you guys our entire show last night. You ready? <laughs> this is our me and Tigo did a whole show last night. Yep. Um. I think it's one of your best personally. Yeah. You know, it's funny because there was one comment under the stream, only one comment. Here, let me let me let me show you. Oh, it's comments sir, because I, I made it private. But it said, now this is the content I subscribed for. <laughs> <laughs> what? Okay. So here, watch this. So this whoever is that person is deserves a medal. Well done. Yeah, I'll look. I gotta I gotta reach out to them. But uh it was it was I, I laughed. I said uh, totally, man. Here we go. <laughs> well done. So this is the whole show. A minute long. Uh, this is now compared. We got Jink on one hand, and then the green bean and Tigo debacles over here. Well, howdy doody, everybody. What's it? going on? Sorry for the slight delay. I will take the heat on this one. All my fault. It happens from time to time. I'm old, and that's the way that it goes. Welcome to Armchair GM. I am Green Bean. That is our friend Tigo over there, and tonight. We have a fun little show for you guys planned, uh, which is, why isn't it happening on YouTube here? I don't see it happening here, T. Let me see. Are you guys here? Let me see. Yeah, they're in here. They're in here? They're in here. 
Let me see my face. Here. We oh. got confusion tonight. I don't know why. It's a totally different crew. Oh, you're streaming to Green Bean. Am Not I? To, yep. Not to Talking Jets. This is the wrong one. All right, I'm going to close this stream and go to the right one. Go to Talking Jets, everybody. It's a crazy night. <laughs> and that's a wrap. That was the whole show. So I was streaming to the wrong fucking place. I'm like, <laughs> I'm, I'm watch, I'm looking at the stream. You know, like when we start, there's a slight delay. So I'm started over here on the software and then YouTube will engage. Mm -hmm. And I like to like, kind of, you know, see, I like to do, I just like to see everything's in order and it wasn't happening. And I'm like, why isn't it going? Like, here we are, we're talking. I yeah. see people in our chat, but it says 59 waiting over here. And like, you know, 40, 37, whatever the hell it was over here. I'm like, <laughs> and he tickles like, no, they're here. And I'm like, but there's a different number. I don't know what's <laughs> happening. The sky was falling. I don't know if you guys caught that there. Like, we were so off guard because we had this whole plan and then it just fell apart and it all started rushing. I'm, I'm sneaking off my Gatorades to my wife and she's replacing it with a new one and all this stuff. And it's just like, dang. <laughs> Oh, Maybe don't wait great. till last minute to do fancy things. <laughs> yeah, right, right. We that's the kind of thing we hang out for an hour, you know, beforehand, yep. make Pesting. sure all our ducks are in a row, you know. We had this whole beautiful it still was a good show, but uh yeah, that was fun. All right, thanks to you. But uh yeah, so that was uh that's what we're putting together. The fucking quality oh, content. Yeah. They just got AJ Brown. AJ Brown? Yeah. What? Get out I don't of know time. if I just saw it in the chat or if it just flashed against my. No, 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 no. Somebody messing with me? Refresh. No way. Jer Jeremy, can you? Can you... I think so. Yeah, I just saw it flash. The chat, the chat keeps No, no, no. I just saw it flash on my screen for ESPN breaking news, but now I don't. I... It's not popping up. No, AJ Brown defends changing social media profile picture to Tom Brady. Oh, maybe it was a precursor to an article then. I got this one. I just thought I'd say breaking news. AJ Brown to the AJ Brown accident. interests Patriots Eagles declined inquiry. Okay, so it's just breaking news giving me the update of what's happening. Breaking news. There is no news. Everybody. No news. It's just, so it's one of those freaking those uh, clickbaits. It was like breaking news: AJ Brown That's to it. the it Pats, and then it got me. Yeah, it That's got it. me. I was like, wait, what? I hate, I hate it all, dude. <laughs> I hate it, Gunny. <laughs> Nothing's real anymore, motherfuckers, man. Just a bunch of liars, all of them. And we got Gator out there. Gator can take your voice, yeah, and your and, face, and, boom. and make you say shit. Did you see the fake Asman show? I've seen the fake Asman show. I thought it was awesome. I was talking to Gator I the other was day. Great. I, I was talking to Gator the other day. I was like, I don't know, man. I feel a little uneasy. <laughs> He's fucking waiting. We did, at least what? with when when he does me, at least he 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 acts it out, which is fun. I, was, okay. I don't know. One day I'm gonna see me saying all kinds of weird shit. I don't know what's You're talking like, whoa, about. Whoa, whoa, whoa! That wasn't me. <laughs> oh, I don't like boobs. Stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to kiss Aaron Rodgers on the lips. Yeah, it's gonna be I'm great. Love him. He's the sexiest guy I know. Uh, all that kind of stuff. So uh e boogie checking in gunny says, fellas, if the football gods were to tell you guys to give up future first, second, and third round picks to win it all, yes or no? And if Hell no, yes. why? 56 year right, Gunny? I think this is Hell a yes. question. Without question, e boogie. Nope, I With want my next year's third. Right? No, <laughs> not the third. Can we counter? Can we counter? Yeah. <laughs> e boogie, man. I you could have all seven rounds worth of picks next year. If you're telling me this year we're Hell winning yeah. it all, you yeah. could have all seven rounds. Take them all. Now <laughs> Don't let's care. let's do something. Let's take a e boogie's construct and let's let's take away the guaranteed results, right? And let's say if you were if if you were gonna trade next year's first, let, let's just say first or first and second. Is there anybody in this draft that you're willing to use our 10 in next year's first for? you think would get us to that kind of promised land thing. You mean like in terms of. All right, wait, hold on. Let's hold on. Let's hold, hold, hold that okay. thought. All I don't right. know how much time he has. Let's say hello to our good friend. Hey, hey, hey. hey. what's good, Jake? <laughs> <laughs> I, I got doing, two. Man? I got two links. I was in here earlier and then I got like two links sent to me. So I don't know. Uh, like 
if I missed anything or like why I'm specifically on right now, but I, you can't say no to green bean and then jets chaos when they're in your DMS. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was talking, I was, I was talking about your, your classic episode with the lane train and, and Gorman and everybody. Um, and I was saying there was, there was something that was said, I believe it was by Gorman when he was saying, I'm looking it up, I'm looking up Knobel. And he said, all I find is this theme park and nobody grabbed it. Like nobody grabbed it. But I want to say nobody knows this, but that's literally, that's top three theme parks for me. And I'm a Knobel? theme park. Here. It's a theme Knobel? park. Oh yeah. Wow. You know what it is, Jake? Listen to this. I was just telling everybody, but I'll tell you. Knobel's is in Pennsylvania. And it's this hidden gem where what they've done over the last 50 years is they've collected all the like the old car carnival type rides from your childhood, like the zipper and all that shit. They restore them to like beautiful working order and they have an entire park of that. Plus, they build their own roller coasters and they keep winning awards like best coaster in the country, best Woody in the country and all that kind of stuff. Wow. So like it's this like it's just this obscure place and they're winning awards but when you go in there it's like walking through your 5-year-old 10-year-old self. It's like it's magical, Jake. That's amazing. <laughs> this this Knobel thing is taking on a life of its own. I don't know if you caught the show today Green Bean. No, but last I didn't night yet. there were two listeners of mine who called WFAN asking two separate hosts if the Jets should take Knobel and each host was like just they were stumped. They're like, uh, I, you know, I, I haven't done enough draft prep. I'm unaware. <laughs> and they're reciting lines from the show talking about how he's a two way player. And then Johnny Quest just followed up and called Keith McPherson again tonight. And Keith's like, This is the second time I've gotten a call about this Knoble guy. And it went for four minutes. I don't know how this Johnny oh, guy didn't break character. God. It, I, can I say I could send it to you? You're, you're gonna yeah. let it is I'll the right funniest now. thing. God. <laughs> as long as you don't give me a copyright, I'll play it right now. Oh yeah, no, I have I have it ready to go. <laughs> What's the best way to send it to you? Send it on Twitter if you can, or email, whatever. You, just tell me where you're sending it, and I'll and I'll grab it. <laughs> this Jake, is your show has show. got <laughs> fake fake potential NFL prospects being discussed on other shows. <laughs> Twitter doesn't let me send the full thing. Can I uh, can I text it to you? Does that work? Do you have like yeah, a yeah. yeah, yeah, text it. Go ahead. Oh my god, this is too funny. Yeah, I mean that that's really good. I love that they're taking it to that length. Are 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 they saying like he's a football player from a college? Yes, they're they're oh. saying all the lines. Like Bobby Midnight played it perfectly. And then I woke up this morning and Johnny Quest sends me an email being like, I called, I called the overnight show. I called Chris McMonical, and then Johnny Quest called Keith McPherson. So he's called twice. <laughs> I'm sending you the most recent one from tonight. I'm drop by, I'm uh, That's air dropping it to my phone so I can text it out to you. Right, it awesome. is it is one of the funniest four minutes I have ever listened to. It's got like every inside joke from my show. I don't know how this guy didn't break character. It's amazing. Yeah, I mean, we got to applaud that kind of effort, man. Oh yes, That's beautiful. Oh, stuff. Most definitely. Yeah, it's really a funny thing, guys. If you haven't checked it out, uh, I don't know which day it was because I mean, look truth is life is weird and days smear together. I don't know what month it is. I barely know what year it is. I'm losing track of this, this whole date time thing. So what day was that show? The, the original one where, well, you know what? The, the, the one that Gator pieced together and then Andrew apologized. I think that's the best, like uh, it's all consolidated. Yeah. Original. Which episode is that? It's a good question. I don't remember to be. I, I, I think it was. I think it was earlier this week. At some point, it was so in the last five days. I okay. feel okay. like it was Tuesday. You know, it had to be because I was home. When did you text me? Let me check. I think I texted you Tuesday. Tuesday. Yeah. So, yeah. so that's I guess it would have been. Watching. Yeah. So I guess it was Monday afternoon. It was my Monday afternoon show. All right, you guys got to check that out. If you, I mean, most of you probably seen it already. It's like he said. It's got legs. Uh, but, uh, and if you, you know, you're probably like, what the hell is going on? So you just look at, you gotta, that's where it is. All right, here, uh, I got this. Aaron Rodgers uniform reaction title. All right, hold on, hold on. This is <laughs> good. And I'm getting like listeners, like stent, like tweeting me graphics of like Knoebel and a Jets jersey <laughs> being like one week from today. <laughs> See here. Like, Hold on. The back of the jersey says like Knobel, and then it's like it's like where he went to school. It just says college. <laughs> college from a school. 
Hey, from college. Dude, it's just so good. And the Fed, dude, it's, I mean, it went on so much further than I ever thought could be possible. God bless Lane Kerner, man. The guy's oh, the legend. Yeah. So where's the window here? Let me let me see here. I'm trying to here it is. Wait, let me let me close that down. Hold on. That's all my texts. Why isn't it open the window? Let me try to download it real quick. Uh, Why does this guy in the chat hate me so much, by the way? Who's this guy? Because uh, you're 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 jerk off, I guess. Who, I don't who's know. this Tim sixteen nine six four guy? I don't like you. What did I do what to did you? you do you probably sent him to the shadow world, shadow realm or something. Is he a Wilson truther? That uh, usually the people that don't like me are the Zach Wilson, Wilson truthers. truthers. Ah, well, and for good reason. I mean, you're you're entirely too mean to obviously one of the best <laughs> quarterbacks we've ever had. You know, it's amazing that 31 other teams can have Zach Wilson for nothing and they don't want him. <laughs> yeah, it, it's a, it's a. I mean, you know, and then you obviously we hear it. It's like, well, the money. You know, well, if he was that good, it's really not that much for a quarterback especially <laughs> somebody who's going to be the greatest ever man this is hard to get jake it's an interesting format i i'm i'm on it though i got it here let me see here uh okay i should have it let me see if this window opens this is, i'm really i i have to see this you're gonna laugh i mean the, the, there's now been three calls on this station in the last 24 hours this is the most recent one from about an hour ago all right, so let me just when I play it, just tell me if you can hear it. Sometimes I have audio issues, so let me see. Let's go to Rob and Glenn. Can, can you guys hear it? Oh, the best part. So Johnny yeah. Quest didn't call in as Johnny and Seaford like he did the Chris McMonicle show last night. He pretended to be Rob and Glennhead, who's another one of my regulars who calls my show. <laughs> oh, that's great. Okay, here we go. Here we go, everybody. Brace yourselves. Digging in. Let's go to Rob and Glennhead first up on the fan. Hey, Keith, great show as always. Thanks. Thanks for checking in. You got it. Not right now. My friend Neil Chipotle is just chilling out, talking jazz, smoking cigars. I was listening yesterday to your show. The guy Bobby from Vermont called up about uh, this guy Kenoble. Yeah. Um, I, I think I found out who was, yeah, I think I found out who he was talking about. Okay. What college? Watching, what school? Uh, I, could, I didn't get that, but there was an NFL network did a spotlight on him. Neil, look up the. Uh, oh, my God. So it's pronounced Kenoble when he was in an island, but then. They changed to Canova when he came over. They were talking about. Oh my god! And his brother was a seventh round pick in like 2022. <laughs> um, dude, the kid. I, listen, I don't know if he did it on the first round, but he plays receiver and nickel corner. His stats are crazy. Do you know how to spell his last name? I have not heard of this kid. <laughs> Canova. Yeah, Canova. Neil, Neil, look it up. I don't know his name. Uh, Forty yard dash, four point three cone drill, <laughs> oh one. I don't even know if that's good. You know, you're an athlete. Is that good? <laughs> Uh, 6.4 yes, 6.41. It could be faster. Vertical 47. <laughs> no, that's ridiculous. The fact is that if, if you play, if you get a receiver and a nickel, right? If he plays receiver, we need a receiver, right? Because those are terrible. We all know that. And <laughs> he's in the corner. We have Michael Carter, who I think is going to be a free agent next year. You can't afford him. So you're replacing yeah. I don't know, but that's what confused me yesterday. We're talking about a two-way player getting drafted and, and expected to play both ways? <laughs> so I saw it on the NFL Network, and then what Bobby was talking about it, it sounds familiar, I looked it up. The crazy thing, he's from like some small island in near Hawaii. He had like 350 kids. It was like 13 kids on his high school team. That's why he went both ways. I know most times in New York and New Jersey, everyone goes both ways. But, you know, when oh my God! Oh. Like, okay. This guy <laughs> in high school, yeah, but in college, this so I'm like, well, this kid, I know that's why I get so I'm like, I'm like, I have not seen this. I haven't been watching NFL Network. It's <laughs> baseball season. It's basketball. Uh, play. No, I love the draft, man. With the Jeff fan. Yeah, I'm no, like, no, I said in my open. I know they're football fans. It's football season 365. You're watching NFL Network every day. Yeah. No. I mean, a lot of guys want Bowers, the Bowers boys, but I don't know. <laughs> like, if he can get this kid in the first, I don't think he's going to fall to ten. And maybe the Giants. Maybe the Cowboys get it. Where are the Cowboys picking? Twenty-four, and uh, yeah, they're, 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 they're cool. they're probably they'll be gone by then. Dude, the ridiculousness! <laughs> I can't even name? take How it. You know the spelling of his name? Oh, Neil, you got that name? He's <laughs> asking <laughs> Neil. Neil's not there. I know. Yep. Yeah. E L E. I'm gonna hang up the list of keys. Be good, right? Yeah, thanks for the call. So, <laughs> he he drops a grenade and goes, <laughs> and I never heard of him. K-A-N-O-B-L-E <laughs> NFL draft? No, 
you guys got to be trolling me. Like a big foot or something. Like a two-way player that plays wide receiver, nickel corner. He's got a 47-inch vertical. I haven't heard of the guy. I think that might be a fake play. Yeah, they got to be trolling me live on air. Nah, I don't, I, I, he also ran a 3 5 40 yard dash. Did he say 3 5? Oh. I don't know. Something <laughs> nah, ridiculous just, on the shuttle. Nah. And you know what's funny? All of that stuff plays right into all this stuff we're hearing about the draft because it's all nonsense. <laughs> Nobody knows anything. Right. And all That's these good point. drills and 40 yard dashes and verticals are not football. <laughs> it, does, it doesn't always translate. Right. Some guys, yeah, that you turn on the film and then you see him test, it makes sense. But there's other guys that, that kill it at the combine, and then they disappear once they get drafted. So, I don't know. I guess it's a, a funny radio thing to troll about this Knoble. <laughs> but I don't think two different calls would call it about this Knoble guy. <laughs> yeah, it's got to be real. Oh, about the jake-ass maniacs. <laughs> Bobby's in the chat right now. Bobby Woodruff. He, you want to oh, hear his, his call? Uh, honestly, it's two minutes. I'll yeah, say yeah, sure. bit. his call oh. might be funnier because like Keith was just rattled. He just had no idea what was happening. It was Dude, that's, Gator, that's Gator's so in good. the chat and he says this Canova stuff ain't done yet. It's not <laughs> there's, done. There's more. <laughs> I gotta catch up. The chat, I'm way behind on the chat. Let me see. Um, yeah, send that to me, Jake. I'll I'll throw that up there too. It, this is so you know, I mean, in 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 a couple of days. You're going to go search for a Kenobel online, and there's going to be stuff. There's going to be gonna, stuff. There's yep. actually going to be stuff on this guy. That's how it goes. Somebody's out there right now working on it. They're making a Wikipedia page for him. <laughs> it's all kinds of stuff, man. It's going to be great. I, I told I told my listeners, if anyone has a Kenobel sign that gets on TV during the draft, I will buy whoever does that a a jersey of their choice. I might need to, like, when I launch a merch store, sell Kenobel merchandise. It's unbelievable. <laughs> All right, here we go. I got it. Let me see here. Uh, Bobby, right. Bob, okay, this is going to be fun. All it right. is unreal. The the way Bobby held it together, I don't know how he did it. Like, you're right. You don't know he's got it in him. This is so good. All right, here we go. <laughs> All right, and we're up. All right, guys, let's do it. All right, let's go back to Bob in Vermont. Go again, B.O.B. Sorry. You got it. Hey, um... I wanted to ask you, what do you think the Jets and Giants will do on the draft, your choices? And also, do you ever hear of a player from college called Canova? From college? <laughs> player from college. What school? College. College. It's <laughs> just college. Do you ever hear of that? Anyway? No, I've never heard of, of Kenobu from college. What no, Kenobu. Kenobo. <laughs> he play? yeah. uh, He plays offense and defense. <laughs> he plays offense and defense. He's a two-way guy. Yeah, that's what they he said. How do you spell the last name? Uh, Kenobo. I can't remember how you spell it. It's not a K. I know that. Okay, because I'm spelling it wrong on Google. Kano. No, Kenobo. <laughs> No. <laughs> I want to congratulate you on your being a dad. This is the best thing. <laughs> my dad, my I mean, daughter's going to be 18 in July. Oh, wow. Congratulations. I mean, that, this is, this yeah, I mean, guys, I'm, I made it through year one, and uh, it, it was a challenge. Like I just Oh, it's hard when they're babies, you know. They yeah. have to be... <laughs> we can't, we can't really talk. Yeah, he's babbling, but congrats to you. And I uh, hope you are well and your daughter is well. Thanks for the call, Bob. I do not know who Kenobo is. Kenobo. <laughs> of a player, a two-way player coming out of college. College. <laughs> gives you like 300 options. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to find out. A two-way player? Uh, plays offense and defense? Everybody just got put on alert. That's all I know. <laughs> yeah. Kenobo is coming. Um, I, I, I know Travis Hunter. You guys know Travis Hunter, right? <laughs> all right. All right. Hold on. Gator just sent me something here. I'm going to, I'm going to, Gator, is it safe to play? 
let me let me let me get that off here. So I I I'll, I, I he's safe to just trust, right? Uh, yeah, I think he's got like a ninety five percent hit rate. I'd say. All right, let me. There was see. one time he sent me a video he's of like I, I I think it was like Calherd in the Shadow Realm, and like he like I, he did something to his head that was like I don't know if I could play this. <laughs> like I'm like this is too extreme. Yeah, you're like, all right, man. I I got to be careful, you know. Yeah. All right, here. Let's see. Uh, let's see what we got here. All right, man. This is a, maybe it's already been on your show. I'm not sure, but uh, let's see what we got here from Gator, man. Uh, just sending it on over. All right, let me get that out. Jay, thank you, Jason. Thank you, Mark Riz. And I'll I'll catch up to the super chats. Uh, in just a second here, let me just get these going. Let me play this video here. All right, let's go. Noble, ex football player from oh, yeah, he is five in seven hundred nine eight LBS prospect grade zero point zero production score sixty nine and an athletic <laughs> score of rhinos. He's very good. Gets flag penalties, but he's very, very good and. <laughs> um, <laughs> football players oh god lane train dude i'll tell you it, it, it's 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 pure gold jake i want I, I know you know that but i need to confirm it more it's it's some of the best shit i've ever seen in any you gotta capacity. sell jerseys you gotta sell jerseys jake you gotta sell over jerseys <laughs> i just this whole thing just happened so organically like i had i had uh i was watching earlier when you guys had buffalo jeff fan on and I have Buffalo on every Wednesday on my show. And we were just taking calls and Lane called in. So we went to Lane and he starts saying the Jets should draft this guy. And he couldn't figure out the guy's name. And then he just says, Kenobo out of college. And we're like, <laughs> we're like who? That's, and, and that was the origin? Just that. that was it. <laughs> just, he just said that. And then like we turned it into this whole character. He can play too. He's the best player in the draft. He can play, <laughs> but he, can, he plays all 22 positions. <laughs> <laughs> and like, oh my god! And then like the listeners just ran with it, and like gave him like an origin story, and then Gator does what Gator does, and gave him a scouting report, and now we're getting like three people calling the fan in the last twenty four hours asking. It's like Howard Stern, like Baba Booey calls all over. Baba again. Booey, I was just oh gonna say that god. it's reminiscent to Baba Booey. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's amazing. Great. I hope it never stops. <laughs> Keep it going. That's what, yeah. I mean, this just, I, I and I agree with Gunny Man. You got to make a Knoebel shirt, dude. I, and, I, and, I'm, and, I'm working on it. I need to. And if somebody, if they, if they hold the sign, they get the inaugural shirt. Like they get it, something yeah. like that. You know, I'm gonna yeah, buy someone a legacy jersey, and then I'll get them a Knoebel jersey. And like I want when they're the jet, like the Jets are on the clock, all the Jet fans they show on TV, and someone has a goddamn Knoebel. <laughs> <Knoebel. laughs> oh my god! You know it's gonna happen. I, I, it's gonna I'm happen. For it. This I'm is the for fan it. base that would make that actually happen. Like you, you just put that out there into the ether. It's gonna happen. <laughs> oh yeah. I think it's a, it's almost a hundred percent, Jake. Even Charles has had to accept that maybe Knobel's real after all these calls and the scouting report from yeah. Gator. Like it's it out has of control. To be real. Dude, He's questioning funniest... his football IQ. Do yeah. I know sports? Like this guy must be. How do I not know about this guy? <laughs> it got so abstract. So, Gunny, when Charles Charles Gorman, he he's Gorman, right? I think it's right. What is yeah, it? Char yeah, Charles T. Gorman. Yeah. So when he was calling, he was so frustrated. And he's like, Jake. I'm Googling it right now. And Jake, you know, he's just following the kind of, you know, the line, this, how ridiculous can we go? And Jake goes, are you really <laughs> going to trust your search engine over what we're saying? Like, <laughs> and he's like, what are you, well, I don't understand. It was, it was, I mean, dude, it's, it's the best. And what Gator's <laughs> doing with it is just, I mean, it just adds so much. Gator's fucking a gem, dude. Gator's <laughs> a gem. I love it. A legend. I just, it, I never want it to end. I, I've I've laughed like nonstop these last like four days just thinking about this whole thing. Yeah, I I I'm excited to see where it goes. This is this is <laughs> real truly fun, you know, because this is the dry season, right? It's like we've mocked yeah. ourselves to death. Oh my we've god, we've argued Brock Bowers versus Fatanu or Odunze or trade up or we just, I mean, we had the uniforms for a little bit. That was nice. We did a little bit of that tonight, but it's like even that we've uh, we we've beaten the horse <laughs> it's dead. The we need the draft, and we still have a week. So, it's just amazing. It, like this fan base is so great, though. That even like we're at this point where like with one week, like we're all just like sick of it, ready for the draft. But like 
there's still what like 300 people watching this right now at like almost 10 o'clock on a Thursday. Like this fan base is the greatest, man. Like look, look how many great Jet YouTube channels there are that are pumping out content year round, and like yeah. it just doesn't matter. I like, guess this fan, like, like I'll say it again, the Jet organization does not deserve how great the Jet fan base is. Like it's just it's time to win, man. Like we're all yeah. just dying for like this. Canobal base is a great example of just how passionate this fan base is. That like there's yeah. there's people calling the fan to ask about a fake draft prospect. It's unbelievable. From college. From college. That's my favorite part though. From college. From and college. then when I ask Bobby, which college? College. Yeah, college. <laughs> but college. Bobby's ability to stick to the script there and not break. I yeah. I would have started. I I can't. I can't keep a straight face. I would have been hysterically laughing, and he just kept it together. And the way he transitioned and tied into like, "Hey, congratulations, by the way, on being a father." Like, what? That, that's such a small yeah. transition. And you know what that does? It keeps him. It like it. It, cha- yep. it, it, yeah. they're, they're it disarms the host. It, yeah, that's right. You know, now he's got to get, you know, now he's endearing. You're touching a, a nerve. Okay. Oh, we, and it keeps it going. And they're like, we can't find this guy. Yeah, that, that's is? awesome. That's so man, good. That's awesome. Jake, you're the man, dude. Thanks for, uh, for hopping on uh, such short notice like that and adding to this was uh, a blast, dude. I appreciate it. My pleasure. I got to get both of you guys back on, uh, back on my channel. Maybe uh, we'll, we'll do it after the draft and we'll, we'll yeah. hopefully we're, Hopefully the uh, the Bauer boys will be put to rest and the you know, the Rome Riders will be rising. That's Rome yeah. Riders. I mean, now we're talking yeah. the Rome Riders. I, I like that. It. I Let's like go. that. <laughs> yeah. All right, dude. Yeah, just let me know anytime. You guys, Anytime, see you guys. Jake. Let me know. What's right, good. See you, Jake. Oh, I almost ended the stream instead of uh, uh see? getting see? Jake. Relax I'm, now. I'm, I'm out of control. Relax. <laughs> uh, yeah. Thanks to Jake for for hopping on. There he goes. You guys know where he is. Jake Asman Show. If you haven't checked it out, which I'm I'm pretty sure you have. Uh, but if you haven't, Jake Asman uh, on YouTube, and of course, uh, you know he's daily, so you can, you, you know, you're if you haven't, just open YouTube during the day, and Jake's on. Yep. So Good you'll time. you'll see him, and uh, and we always appreciate his time. This is a a truly beautiful exercise, and and I agree with what he said. But by the way, uh, I've I've maintained this for years that the Jets or the fact that we are who we are, like uh, there's lots of you know, uh, committed fan bases and all, but they get something for it. They get winning. You know, every couple yep. of years they they're competitive. You know, the yep. Niners they they a did quality for product. a while, but they come they back. They get a quality they, product. Yep, they get a quality product. We have gotten drips, trash, drips of success <laughs> over the years, and it's short lived. We don't sustain shit. When we, Rex Ryan, we get two years and then it's in the toilet. Bill Parcells, we got a couple years and then it all crashed and burned and he was gone. And Bill Belichick resigns on a napkin and, and all that. We get much more of that. And the fact that we're still, we're the most committed fan base. Like, period, even if, to the winning teams, you look at the Niners, you look yeah. at the, the Ravens, you look at the Steelers and the and the Eagles fans. Yes, they're ravenous. They're committed. We're we're I I would I would say we are more committed than them, and we get 100%. nothing in return. The, I, I the think- Johnsons <laughs> bought a six hundred million dollar franchise. It's now worth six plus billion dollars, and they've done nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I'm the easiest you. way to compare it is that the Jets fan base comes out in droves. And we're a losing organization. You see all these other ones that are considering themselves diehards. Now nah, y'all started coming out when y'all started winning. We've been here. We've been here dedicated to this team. We're we're all putting effort and time. We everybody in their mom that's a Jets fan puts effort and time into how the team can get better each freaking year. As if we're gonna be calling Joe Douglas ourselves and saying, Hey, I put together an entire freaking draft that I think you should consider. Like that's how committed we are as a fan base. Yeah, nah, there, there's there's no other fan base like us. It's yeah, and here's my last 10 drafts. And why they were significantly better than any of you guys. Are you flagging me, Jeremy? What does he want? Um, I just wanted to know, did you any either of you notice there was a moment that call you guys didn't mention when he when he stuck with it and repeated that he's from college? Yeah. The host of that show said that narrows it down, down to, to about 300. About 300, yeah. He goes, that what college? Down college? To about 300 college. possibilities. <laughs> It's what it's called. That's a call. The other call was great. He goes, there were 13 players on his whole team, so he had to play. You know, it goes both everybody ways. In York, everybody in New York and New Jersey goes both ways. I was like, oh, <laughs> that's a gem, dude. Slid that shit in there. Uh, this big a little fella, singer. Thank you. Uh, Tigo, I'm going to bring you on, too. Well, we got a, a 15 minutes to the show. We'll get to our super chats. 
We can talk Knoebel. We can talk uniforms. We can talk. Uh, we can talk trades. Whatever you guys want. Uh, big fella, thank you uh, for checking in. Dude, I tell you what. If the Jets were smart, they would embrace this, and they would make some sort of something. One Jets drive crew. The Jets signed. Make it. Uh, put it on Twitter. Sorry. Woody Johnson. The yeah. Jets just signed Knoebel. <laughs> but it has to build enough legs because right now it's still niche enough. If we get a sign at the draft and start tweet like mass tweeting the Jets, the New York Jets, yeah, and but then you got to start getting. This is where you got to play the game. You got to get the the Twitter guys on board. NYJ Matt, NYJ, uh, I forget the other one, Mike, Mike. We got to get those Mike, guys yeah. on board. All talking about you know. All of them. Jets X Factor. Get Joe Blewett to do a whole film review. <laughs> a whole film on review Knobles. on Knobel. <laughs> like you got to go all in. Everybody's got to do it. If you do it, the Jets. I will say one thing about the Jets, and you guys were mentioning it earlier. The organization on the field has not given us a product to be proud of in the, for a team. long, long time. But the the media team, the Twitter yeah. team, the Elite. social media team. We've got Elite. some of the best, if not the best, in the business. Yeah, and they'll no they'll run with it, no doubt. Yeah, dude. The the Taylor ham egg and cheese sandwich says it all. Yeah. Boom, done. Exactly. Yeah, we're the best. <laughs> we're the best. Uh, Mark Riz, I put this up before. That's a a beautiful one. Uh, but I want to get to uh, RB Gamer. I skipped you just because we were talking about Knoble. Uh, this is a good one. Thank you, RB Gamer. Uh, I hung out with RB Gamer last night. We had a real good hang on the beanbagger. Uh, Wednesday night get together. If you guys want to ever hang out with us, just uh, the links in the description. You can come join and hang out. Supports the channel. I appreciate it. But we have some fun, man. Great group of guys in there. RB Gamer hung out with us last night. Uh, compare the Lions and Jets New Jerseys, which are very similar. Yep. And tell me our collar doesn't pull the whole jersey together. <laughs> Fucking, it's so funny. One of the things we were talking about last night, that's where I got the collar information. It was actually Braden from New Zealand goes, well, guys, if you look at the collar, because he's a detail guy, I'm like, what? The fucking collar? What are you talking about? And it's a whole thing. So let me pull that up. Uh, the, he's not wrong. The black jersey is so much better because of the green collar, in my opinion. It's the tiniest of details, but it ties the whole jersey together. All right. Let's see if we can get the, the, the Lions new jerseys. They're so similar that uh, Lions fans didn't believe that it was a New Jersey when they came out. Because all I, I'm pretty sure the only thing they did was it used to say Lions on the arm sleeve, and it doesn't anymore. It's just three stripes. All right. Let me see here. I'll pull this up for you guys if you haven't seen it yet. I got to do it kind of. I'm doing it in a cheesy, fast way, but uh, it is what it is uh, for now. Let's get this up here. Tigo, you're cut off. Sorry, buddy. Yeah. Uh, it's not, uh, it's not intentional. So, all right. So there we go. That's the lions, new uniforms. What were their old, you know, I mean, it looks the same to me. I don't know. They, well, they, 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 they used to black? say the word lion on it. No, that it's the same Jersey. I think it didn't say Detroit or lions on the front. Like it does now. And then the sleeve used to have the word lions on it. You can see it off to the left. That's the old Jersey in that little image. Oh, okay. 77. Let's Okay, let, let's do that then. So that's very different, though. Look at the. Uh, yeah, the, no, there's the stripes nope. on that one, too. Hold on. What the hell's going on here? Is it the same jersey? This? Yeah. No, look. Oh, you're saying the Lions, but the stripes were different. The stripes are different, but that's, I'm pretty sure that's all that they changed. Is the See, stripes in and the font. Talking. So they took out Lions. They got this weird thing here, too. That's, they took that out. See, it's like, see that little like seam? Line. No, 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 down, but that's yeah. because it, that, that's that's the Jersey jersey. They'll have that seam still. So it's in hug uh, around. Oh, that's the and, that's the game jersey. I got you. Yeah, I got you, that's a you. game jersey so that it'll hug around pads and, you know, all that stuff. Still move. All right. So then, all right. So let's look at the Jets. New jerseys. Uh, it's new uniforms let's just quickly look at jets god damn it let's go right here we'll look at it we'll just look at this one all right so 
I mean, they're very similar. The the Lions one did, did the did the stripes cut off here? Did it, yes. Did it, yeah, I guess they all. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Yeah, they're they're kind of similar. What were you saying? That Lions fan said what? Tigo? No, 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 no. That's that's what all I was saying. Is the sleeve says Lions on it, and then the front of the jersey, right above the numbers, says Detroit and Lions. Ours doesn't. But the biggest difference between the two jerseys is the collar. We have a color oh. collar, and they don't. So and you all can, right, and I like these better than the Lions ones. Yeah, and look at the collar. So you see that thickness, and then there. This is the that little V kind of stitching that I was talking about. Yeah. You see that? So that's really nice. Let me see the, the the black one. Hold on, where's the black one? And then the black has a green collar. Well, this is last year's. This is the legacy. Wait, I don't know. Let me hold on. No, but the one that Sauce is wearing, that's correct. Why can't I fucking scroll? What's going on here? There we go. So yeah, same thing. So the 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 Detroit one didn't have that collar. Is that what it was? Yeah. Let's the sleeves, the they also have a more detailed stripe, I guess, because it's a blue and silver kind of a thing, but they don't have the collar. Oh yeah. It's a two-tone stripe. Right, okay. I see what you're saying. Okay. Hold on. This is I'm so clunky. Um where were they? Where was the all three? All right, here it is. We'll just look at this one. So the collar's the same color. Yeah. I see what we're saying. Yeah, well, you can I don't see know. The, the font's different, and then it says Detroit. Yeah, well, there were a lot of Jets fans that thought we should have put Jets here, like our logo. Yeah. And there was a mock-up, um, like uh, I get maybe it, it was it was it was supposed to be a leak, but it wasn't an official leak. It was just I guess somebody just made it, and it was similar, but it had the Jets thing right where the Detroit Lions thing. It, it said Jets here, so I guess people were may, might have been like expecting that, um, which is possible. But I'll tell you what, I don't I don't mind. I mean the the New York thing across our front, I didn't love that. I didn't love it. You know, it was fine. I didn't love the jersey in general. The 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 supposed wing, whatever the hell that was, yeah, that it, was didn't make, it didn't look like a wing to me. Like it's a wing. It fucking says who? I know what wings look like. I think I liked the black ones last year better than the black ones of this year, but I think it's because I, I did like the New York across the chest. Is that their new helmet, dude? Look at that. I, I made a comment on That's so this to me helmet. looks like Panthers. So I was saying they're like, is it the Panthers or the Lions? Because I saw this and I, at first glance, I thought it was the Panthers New Jersey's. Yeah, I would too because of the color. Yeah, and it, it is just looks like the second helmet though? Right? Because their first one's still the silver. Has to be. First I think this is the second one. Yeah. Attack uh, Uniform Media Day. I mean, that's, yeah, I guess that's their second helmet. That's sharp. I like Good it. helmet. I'm really curious to see what teams do with a third helmet now that we're allowed yeah, to have too. one this year. And it, it better be white, Jets. I hope swear. it's white. Yep. fucking swear. Blue Titan shit. I saw, I saw a, a news article that said the Jets have an opportunity to bring back. I closed. I didn't even finish it because I saw the Sanchez in the Titans jersey, and I was like, I'm done with this. I'm done with this. I'm done with this. I don't need to read this. Yeah, my Alan stat Jones. guy says it reminds him of uh, University of North Carolina, and now I can't unsee it because <laughs> oh, it yeah, does no, look well, more. more yeah, I think they're a little more powdery blue. A little, yeah. I think it's a little more. Yeah. Powdery. The Tar Heels are closer. A little to more. Color. Well, let's ask Jeremy. Jeremy's a powdery guy. You think it looks more powdery? <laughs> <laughs> Jeremy likes his powder. Mm. Now, we don't talk about it a lot, but he's a powdery fella. Uh, Alan Dode says, Bowers boys meet Knoble kids. There it is. I like it. I like that. No, I think it's got to be the Knoble cats with a K. <laughs> Knoble cats. What do you think, Alan? <laughs> it's like we argued last year with the fail Mary versus the hell Mary. Oh, um, yeah. Couldn't believe we argued about how to call the most embarrassing right. player. We had this. <laughs> we had experience you know, up to that point. Let me see something. I got it over here. I don't hang it up. The um, fail Mary. Where is it? have it uh is this it is this the one yeah i uh i i i i have all my towels right i think i like to have like a like merchandise that it's like it's like with me with concert shirts like i always buy a shirt of the show that i go to but i always it's a specific thing i get it has to have the date of the day i was there i have an exceptional concert shirt collection 
It's a and memory. Like 90% of them have that. So uh, same thing with like jet stuff, but I just cannot bring myself to hang this damn thing up. No, I can't. Because yeah, nah. yeah, of the right. fail Mary. No, I can't, can't do it. You can't. Yeah. We don't blame you. Keep it because that's really cool to have, obviously, but you can't hang that. Yeah. I can't. I can't do it. Uh, Jeremy. Jeremy wants me to hang it, but I'm not. And I just. <laughs> Jeremy's like, what are you talking about? He's calling me. He's like, when are you going to hang up the Black Friday thing? I'm like, Jeremy. <laughs> stop, stop it, it, it's almost every hour on the hour in the group chat. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Constantly, Tigo, right? And then I'm like, <laughs> Jeremy, just slow down with the powder and. No, we'll, we'll be fine. Uh, who else? We got Fat Gandalf checking in. I, I might have got Fat Gandalf in trouble, he said. I got to see. Hopefully, this wasn't real. I put, I had Fat Gandalf won a, a contest with uh, with us a couple weeks ago, the Liquid yeah. IV. And I sent it, and I had his name. He gave me his name, but I, I wrote Gandalf on it anyway. And his wife got the package. She's like, fuck is Gandalf? And I, I was like, oh shit, did I did I get you in? I mean, does she not know you're Gandalf? I don't know. Is it a secret? I don't know. I feel bad. A secret identity? It's like us in here, right? Like nobody right. knows I'm fucking <laughs> Frankie from Flatbush. You know? <laughs> My real name's Jim. Don't call me that. It's like, well, like me with Green Bean, you know. It's funny. I you know what's funny? I have actually in over the past couple of years, somebody will say, Hey, my name is Jim. I'm like Green Bean. I'm like, my wife's like, dude. I'm like, I, I know, I hear you. It's like certain circles, I'm not. You know, I have another name. You know what I mean? Like I'm applying for a job. I'm Green Bean. Did I tell you guys when I went when I got this job? I was in an interview with the COO of this company and, and the vice president. And at the end of a 52 minute interview, the last five minutes, she goes, So can I ask you one more question? I said, Yeah, of course. And she said, uh, so what's up with this green bean thing? I'm like, Oh, you found that, did you? I'm like, Well, that's <laughs> and they left. They're like, Yeah, so uh is that the guy? If we hired you, is that the guy? We're guys said, mm, yeah, That's kidding. a character I play on TV. Yeah, that's, that's, right. I play on that's TV. kind of a character. <laughs> See, that's a that's a side of me that I won't bring to the executive director position at your company. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're so like, what's uh? Tell us about this green bean thing. Uh, Jason Edwards checking back. He's like, I got green bean gunny Jake the best classic. Right on, dude. Appreciate it. Been a fun Jason. show, man. It was Look a really fun show. Right, yeah. Gunny's here, Jeremy's here, Tigo's here, Buffalo did an hour, Jake stopped by, Gators sending shit. This was great. Great, was nice. Great show, and Dolph's popping in. You know what I mean? Uh, Jason Edwards says, this is crazy. Obi-Wan Kenobi. Oh, that's a good one, too. I like that. <laughs> that's good. Oh, yeah, sorry, guys. Yeah, I see Jets. Now, Jets Mets, I think you're the comment under that stream. I think this is the guy. Who said, now this is the content I subscribe for, Tigo. I think it's Jets. <laughs> I think that's who it is. Okay. That was a great comment. Uh, he says, how does Knobel compare to Zach? Dude, Knobel's 10 times the prospect. Zach Wilson. Come on. Knobel's can throw the ball and then go catch it himself. And not in that <laughs> fake way that like Lamar did. No, we're talking like no. No, heat he, it he up. Just he just launches it 60, 70 speed. yards down the field. And he runs a 3-5-40. So he's Golden. He'll get there. Yeah, mercy fate popping. And see, you know, I'm, not everybody knows this about Kenobi, but he was also the lead cheerleader. He's 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 running this. He's running that too. I also heard that he was one of the guys with the sticks on the marching band. He was oh, doing that. He does, he does color guard and director. He doesn't need a halftime break. He goes out there with the color guard. He throws the girls in the air. He twirls the flag. He does the flute. He's like all at the it. same time. The thing that really <laughs> amazes people is how fast he changes uniforms. That's right. Uh, he's also the mascot. He does the the he's the, the kind kicker. of he's the kind of mascot that like he'll he you know those those guys they do like push ups and they jump up tables and stuff they're dressed in a wolf uniform that's him or rhino. In fact, if you've ever seen Friday Night Lights, the story of Booby is actually tailored after him, except he never got hurt. Yep, <laughs> Booby. That's a whole Booby thing, right? I don't know who that is. Who's Booby? What Friday Night Lights? Booby. The running back? I know who you're talking about. No, I don't know. Friday Night Lights. What? Was that that was the team? Well, that was yeah. I I I definitely have watched. I don't even remember. Yeah. Okay. I'm thinking. Of, is that the one with the big fat kid? What's that one? No, no, no. That's from Murder the Titans. That's Varsity Blues or some shit, isn't it? Or Maybe. or Murder the Titans. He was in most. Both, about, uh, yeah, most of these football fans. films have a fat. Yeah, they always do. Come on. They always have yeah. a, a guy who's way too big to be playing sports, but then he's like. 
the left the tackle of the field. The left tackle. Right. Yeah, you, know where they got him? you know where they found him in the sixth round, everybody. That's where you find that guy. He's in every movie. <laughs> Some coach hanging on his back be like, one more. <laughs> yeah, Mike the Stack Guy checking in. What's up, Mike? Good to see you. He says, heard nobody went to Knoebel's B-Day party. Oh uh, man! So he's he got didn't some leadership have a birthday questions. party. He was in the gym getting after it. <laughs> that's right. He don't even have yes. a party. He had oh, birthday. That's... He had birthday cake protein powder as his. Uh, that's what he birthday rewarded himself with. <laughs> he did a full right. body day instead of taking the day off. Let me see here. So I I I put a poll up there. I want to close. So um, we uh, I asked you guys. So do you guys see now, now Tico and J Jeremy? Do you see the jet? In the jet logo, do you see a wing? Yeah, like, did you ever have this? I saw, I, I, saw, I saw what you saw with the Concord. That you know, obviously doesn't have the little arc, but I saw like the very like fighter planes, you know, jets like the very sleek kind of futuristic jet. That's how I see it. Well, and it's always been there. Like I showed you guys, this is a real. Just so you guys know, this I think this is the only thing I have left. From my previous, like when the Jets actually had this logo before, like this is real. I didn't get it now, or like I, I've had. I think I got this. That's I was original. Like yeah, like I think I had it like 14, 15 years old. It was on my Mitsubishi Eclipse for a short spell. Um, but you see, like this was always a Jet. I don't know how anybody sees anything else. Yeah, yeah. I I immediately saw it. Tail wing, the whole nine. Yeah, yeah. very nine clearly looked like. You know, I mean, so they, now it looks like a stealth bomber to me from the side angle. After we've just said it's a jet, I see a stealth bomber, but well, definitely from the side, definitely from the side. That's yeah. what we're looking at. Yeah, exactly. Does anybody well, remember Star Fox, the game on like the yes, like, that's I where my mind went game. immediately. That's I went to Fox and Falco, and like that's where my mind went immediately was to that fighter plane. Because it has Actually, very angular yeah, yeah. tailwind, like tail wings that, that come up. That's where my we mind had to went play to. that in two D. So that's all we got to see was it from the side. And did you so, say, did you say Falco? Falco, man, he crashed and burned in the Sugar Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> different Falco, different Falco. <laughs> hey, don't you try to slip that by me? I'm covered in powder. <laughs> I know what I'm talking about. It was Falcon. That's good. Uh, so the poll, here's what they said. So 69% of you see a jet, 10% of Jets fans hanging out with us tonight. See a wing. Fucking wing. I, I, it's funny when, when NYJ Matt said that I like looked at it. I'm like, I try to see a wing. I can't see it. Like what, what is, so what, how do we see a wing? Is it looking down on it? And it's like, so that's like, we're from above. And this is where the jet, that's where the jet plane is. I don't see a wing. I don't know. I, 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 I guess it would be if it was like on its side and you're looking top down, but you cut off half of the plane for some reason. That seems extra hard and, for us yeah. to go ahead and see. Well, and if that is, but listen, but if that is what you see, what a stupid logo. <laughs> <laughs> what a stupid ass design. Um, so 10% say they see the distorted Pepsi logo. Yeah, it's fucking great. Once and it was mentioned, I can't unsee it. Yeah, yeah. and ten percent see some some else. I don't know what it is. It's something yeah, else. I, I saw the Star Trek little com thing that they used to press to go ahead. Oh, pretty much. Well done. Yeah. That's literally what yeah. I. Yep, exactly. That's what I saw when I saw it, and I was like, yeah. "That's kind of weird." But okay, whatever. <laughs> it, it needs the yep. other side a little bit, but it's there. <laughs> yeah, that's what I saw—the little Star Trek com uh, communicator thing. But, yeah, that's it. But now I see the jet. But now like, I can see where the jet is, is is being displayed. Yeah, this is uh this has been a fun ass show, everybody. This is this is a good one. Oh, yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, we got three hundred something people watching in, on Twitter. What's up, Twitter? So if you guys are on Twitter, consider giving the giving me a follow. You know, I tell you, I think I got one follow. We get like three hundred people, two hundred to three hundred people a night on film. Sometimes it reaches four hundred fifty people on Twitter. Nobody follows. Why not? Yeah, I know you had fun. If you guys haven't subscribed to the channel tonight, I don't know what. I don't know what it's going to take. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't know what it's going to take, man. We, uh, I feel spent. You know, this has been a, an emotional roller coaster for God's sake. <laughs> uh, so, um, yeah, if you could, 
Don't forget to smash the like button, guys. Give me those there, Milk Thumbs. Uh, it's greatly appreciated. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do. Don't forget to support the guys. The entire crew is listed in the description. Their YouTube pages and or Twitter. Like the uh, Gunny, I think I have your YouTube and Twitter. Dom C, I have YouTube and Twitter. Jeremy, I have his powder recipe and his favorite his powder sub recipe. <laughs> Jeremy's favorite sub shop from the Brooklyn Brothers Food Reviews. I got to put that up there too. The link for that. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll show. That. I love it. I love it. It's great. I love it's when great. I fun. It's a good time. It, it really is, is a good time. Fun. Thanks. And I and I genuinely like Jeremy's brothers too. Like they're good. You know what I mean? Like I I like the brothers. Uh, lately, I've only seen Jeremy. I, I haven't seen much of the brothers, but I could just be missing it. We go in little is... stints of when we travel and have time. So the, the last few are actually for late. The, the last few. Yeah, so it's been terrible for the last couple of weeks. Well, when the brothers come back, it's going to be really good again. Um, I'm just kidding. I now look, just so you guys know, if I didn't love Jeremy, I wouldn't be able to say that. If I didn't like him, I wouldn't say anything like that. I'd be like, I really respect you. I think you're wonderful. That's how it would sound. <laughs> Dang, that's what I get. <laughs> well, that, that's he goes like, wait a minute. Why am I not getting bullied? Now I need to want to get bullied. I say to Tigo, I'm like, I really respect your opinions and takes. I agree with everything. <laughs> <laughs> oh. on, the East think, on the East Coast, if you're not busting each other's balls, you're not friends. You're not friends. Right. That's, that's the truth. Yeah. It's, it's really true. And, I, and I've learned, you know, I, I've, I've been, I was in Florida for 15 years. I was in LA for almost two years. And I was in Vegas for a little while. And now I'm in Virginia for the last bunch of years. It is not that way. You know what I mean? Yeah. It is not that way. You go to somebody like, you know, you say, give me a break, fatty. You know, like you get a fuck, I get reported. You know what I mean? If I say to somebody, "Hey, man, do I, you look powdery today?" That's it. It's enough. I can get fired. You're gone. I'm gone. I'm, like, I'm just fucking joking around. It's not a joke. You yeah, didn't know fired. my mother. My mother used to abuse me with powder. Like, oh my god. <laughs> Which, if that's the case, I certainly don't mean to be <laughs> insensitive abuse to the powder abuse. Powder? Yeah, hey man, you never know. Maybe dude. she forced them to eat powdered milk. No you water. Ever see, you ever see mommy dearest? <laughs> oh, water gummy. That hey, did you guys? Like... You guys are making me feel old tonight. But did you ever see mommy dearest? If you have, you want to see the best abuse film of all time? <laughs> it said the best. Joan it's a home Collins. run, boys. And it's, a, it's a true story oh, about a famous dearest. actress and her adopted daughter. What she did. No wire. <laughs> <laughs> said she beats her with the hangers and there's oh. powder every fucking where. I swear to God, there's powder. Oh my God. Right, Jeremy? Remember that scene? There's powder all over her face a little bit. Hey, it's oh. on Prime Video for those yeah, of y'all who have Amazon No Prime wire Prime. hangers, Curly Norman. I'm telling you, dude. It's it's horrendously, like, disturbing. It's the, yeah. Mommy Dearest. Yeah, now is, I got to watch it. Yeah, Mommy you'll Dearest. love it. I mean, it's a very good movie. I mean, 72% um, from Rotten Tomatoes. That's really damn good. No, it's a, it's a badass movie and it stands the test of time. But it is... It's a crazy thing because it was like a it's an aging actress. It's a real story. It's from the daughter. The daughter wrote a book or whatever and it's made. But uh the the it was like about a real actress, very famous, who was aging and like concerned, like she was trying to keep up with the looks and the whole thing. She was very focused on her career and she needed her daughter to be perfect. And when you know, she, and she would just beat her into submission, like you know, like it was crazy. But uh, anyway. Yep, no wire hangers. Everybody knows. <laughs> you call this clean? Yeah, the comet. That, that's what it was not powder. It was comet cleanser all over her. That's what, what it was. Hold, remember comet cleanser? Yeah, I remember I that stuff. Some, I have some right now in my bathroom. You still yeah. using the powder? Comet yeah, cleanser? I love it. Yeah. All right, you got I think it's nostalgic or something. It's on the other side of this wall. It's right over there. Wait, do you use what do you I use it in our, on our like on our bathroom and stuff when we're cleaning the, the well, toilets we keep and the, all of our cleaning stuff in the laundry in the, we have elevated I, stuff because we have small children. You have little kids. Things. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, right, yeah, Gunny, we we forget when the kids get older, you can kind of leave shit around. Yeah, when they know not, better. And they're not as yeah. suicidal yeah. anymore. Yeah. Yeah. My kid tried to throw himself off the couch today because he dropped his binky. That's right. Yeah. Well, he's just like, I, I need that thing do. right now. And he went head first. They don't just, care. No, they don't dude. care about their lives. They can care less. <laughs> Joan <laughs> Crawford. What did I say? Joan Collins? It was Joan Crawford. Thank you, Ryder and Talents Bob. Uh, we got to make sure that's clear. Uh, Florida people would want to fight you if you said that, at least this part. What part of Florida are you in, Ricky? Yeah, what part are you in? I'll be down in Miami for five days. Uh, on May 10th, I'm heading down there. I'm going to do a 
I'm not going to be reachable. I'm going to be deep, dark in the in the in the depths of uh, unreachability, guys. So Miami I'm, swamps. I'm, I'm guessing coming, Ricky. I'm guessing Ricky is not even telling me. I'm, gu- I'm guessing Ricky is from the Tom Petty part of Florida. Oh yeah, Panhandle. That's that would be my guess. Yeah. Yeah. Tom Petty was was univ- He was uh, Florida State, I think. Florida State University, Seminole area. Mm-hmm. That's is that Panhandle? I think it is. I might have that wrong. Uh, Mike Mustando checking in. He says, I want to love the unis. Why no Jet logo or New York Jets on it? It looks like a generic football practice jersey. Uh, P.S. I love the helmets. Right. That has the logo on it for you. Well, you know what it is? I think it's hearkening back to a classic football era. Like, I know you, you, I don't know what age you are. I mean, that, I don't think that picture is you, Mike. It might be. Um, but, you, you know, followers. if you're on the younger side, like the NFL has kind of slowly kind of trended toward like more eclectic, you know, uh, like you got the Broncos jersey kind of and helmet kind of started that years ago with the weird stripe on the pants. Remember that shit? And then so like the Jaguars and like the half black half, it's like it's kind of trended toward a more uh, it's just kind of a, it's just different. The classic look is stripes. Like solid colors. I, you know what I'm missing? I would love a stripe down the middle. I know it's fine. I'm not going to complain about it. But if they pulled that off, I'd, oh, yeah. And I striped down the middle of the helmet. That's my shit, man. Mike is 50, by the way. What? He's 50. Oh, so he's my age. So he's just, okay. He just has a preference difference. I thought it was an age. See, like this, Tigo. That's what I'm talking about. No, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, I just wanted to give you I do. I, I kind of get this whole like I grew up watching soccer. And so like in soccer, the badge is always on the jersey. Like there's no jersey ever made for soccer that doesn't have the badge on it. You always play for the badge. And like that's a big thing is is no one's above the team. And I, I kind of get that sentiment. I wish we would have put didn't even have to. You didn't even have to put jets on it. Like put the badge on the jersey so that everybody when you look at your teammates you realize obviously you're playing for each other but you're playing for that badge it's bigger than you are i like that i could i could get with that like we had the the jerseys for a while with the white helmet had the jets logo here yeah if i remember correctly so yeah i i could get with that it's it's not a it's not as, as much of a rub for me mike but i but i get it you know and there was like i said there was that leak that it was a fake leak but we didn't know at the time it had the Jets logo here. But I got to say, like, uh, on the last jersey, I didn't like the New York thing. I mean, but and then again, it could just be the wings that painted it. But I, I think it's just uh, one of those things where the badge doesn't carry as much weight as it does in other sports. You know, in in other sports, the logo, the, the badge carries a lot of weight. That's why, like, in hockey, it's the biggest thing on the front of the jersey. You know, it's just a it's a massive maple leaf or it's a giant New York Ranger or it's the badge matters a lot more because you're you play for the badge. And I think football has never really had that. Had that identity where it's where you're playing for the badge, you know, you never yeah. see even in with teams that do have the names on the jersey, you never see them celebrate and like grab the jersey and be like, you know, pointing at the jersey and doing all that stuff where you see that in other sports. And I was watching soccer yesterday and my my team scored and the guy ran to the corner where our fans were and grabbed his jersey and was like ripping his jersey off to show everybody the badge to remind people like Real Madrid, remember. And you don't see that in football. And I wish you did. With football, I try to make it the number. Like, that's my boy. <laughs> but I get but again, it. the credit goes back to the player, <laughs> not the team. And that's where. Yeah. And that's it, what he's saying. It Jeremy. should be about the team, not the player. And I will point out that the last two Jeremy's, that's my boy, was Zach Wilson and Elijah Moore. So, <laughs> not working for us, Jeremy. You know, <laughs> Jeremy, what did you do? How many games this year did you refuse to even wear a jersey? Remember that? That was great. Well, I, f- I forgot to wear one and they won. So that was it. He couldn't fucking wear a jersey. <laughs> it's so good. Yeah, I will. I'll uh, I'll break out my concert shirts. I'll do that. Uh, I have a lot of ideas uh, for like extra content and stuff. The truth is, Ricky, is that my time, I, I, my time is very limited right now. As you can see from the channel. I mean, I was a daily content guy for a couple of years. And then now I just I do the three or four shows a week and it's like and i you know so it's been it's just a, it's a phase i'm in but yeah i would love to show you guys my concert shirts man 
Every now, like when I go to a metal show or something with my son, I unzip the bag. I, I have these bags of like these uh, things. I break them out and I go through all of them. I usually take out my King Diamond shirt and call it a day. Let everybody know I fucking know what I'm talking about. <laughs> that's right. No matter where I go, if I bring my King, yeah, that's right. It's like yeah. Oh, that guy knows. That's right. I know. I know how to go to a show. I know what I'm doing. Uh, all right, guys. We're gonna. Um, so Tom Petty's from Gainesville. That's what it was. It's funny. I read the whole Tom Petty biography. I just mixed it up. I know. Same no. thing. I, I just, I kind of just forgot. Yeah. Gainesville. That's what it was. I had it. I was, I was close. I was slightly off um, by about four hours. <laughs> All right. But that's our show, everybody. We are going to uh, wrap it up. It is 10 19 later than usual. Oh, nope. Jason Edwards, not, not letting us go. That's <laughs> right. Snowball. I see you. I see you. Uh, Jason Edwards. Gunny and Chaos, what jersey are you going with next? Oh, he's got a whole conversation starter here. Oh shit, uh, Gunny, or uh, what? What are you? What are you getting? Did Did you say before? So, yeah. So for me, I'm I'm looking at getting me a uh, another sauce jersey because I like the fact that the sauce jersey now has a legitimate numerical one vice the butter stick yeah. option that we currently have here. So I got to get me another sauce. And I'm definitely copping that uh, Garrett Wilson number five. Um, I think that is a must. If I was going to do a third, it's definitely going to be Jermaine Johnson's. So, yeah, those, those for me, it's Sauce, Garrett Wilson. Those are both happening. And then potentially a Jermaine Johnson. Right on. Chaos, what are you getting? Um, a, somebody promised me even before they were released, when the New Jersey's come out, that they're getting me a Brees Hall. So, uh, and that's what I, they asked me, they said, I'm going to get you a jersey. Which one do you want when the new ones come out? And I, we'll see if it happens. But I said Brees Hall. So that's the one I want. Like a listener or like what your color? Wife? Uh, it, kind of a listener and a friend through the Jets, like through our world. I'll tell you later. <laughs> okay. Got it. What no color? Sweat. Green. Uh, white. White. Oh, yeah. I thought I had it. I can't get white. I have my white sauce jersey. I spilled mm. coffee all over it, which is again why people don't want me to wear the Quinnen. I'm definitely going to ruin it. There's no fucking. I can't <laughs> yeah, wear white. You can't, dude. Today, just <laughs> today, I went and got. I went and got my team Dunkin' Donuts. I promoted someone today, so I went and got Dunkin' Donuts. When I go, I get myself a coffee, and I was opening the door, and guess what happened? The fucking coffee spilled all over my dress shirt for the, you know, all over the door. Everybody came out and said, "What's going on?" I said, "I fucking threw coffee at the door." What do you think? That's what I do. You know, like, so I just, if I wear anything light, I'm spilling. This what's what it is. I just, I got to get green. Uh, it. But I'm, Chris going Moreno, I'm going one of each. You can't wear the shirt of the band you're going to see unless you buy the shirt there because you're, and you, you know, you're doing the thing. I usually wait till the end, truth be told. And unless I'm going to see Kiss, I wear a Kiss shirt at a Kiss show. That's what I do. <laughs> Always Kiss at a Kiss show, Chris. But you don't wear the shirt for the current so you got to wear a shirt from a, a previous era those are the kiss rules not applied anymore because they finally did wrap it up but uh anyway those yeah. are the rules guys we gotta go it's i gotta be at work in a couple hours for god's sake <laughs> you uh, keep it going i know it's me i'm the chatty kathy uh that all said guys have a great night again don't forget to support the crew all their links are in the description oh i'm gonna drop nick shine is live right now let me drop his link right here uh, in our chat, he's. Why don't we all go over there right now? I'll go over too. We all go over to Nick Shine's show. Let's blow it up and tell him. Let's say we'll all say this. What's your problem with poached eggs? Ask him. Let's see what he says. Got to be what is Knobles. Let's try. Let's try. Oh, here I'm we go. To do it right now. It out. What is your problem hey. with poached <laughs> eggs? What's the problem with poached eggs, Nick? Why do you hate poached eggs? Some variation of that. Jet it out, checking in. He says, one, the site, sh on the site, shopping this moment. I'm going nuts, just waiting for the name choice for authentic jersey. Need the black Garrett Wilson. Yeah, the black is sharp. Now, I know a lot of fans don't like it. I don't feel that way. I think it looks nasty. Green I, I wish Yeah, I don't know. But I don't know if I like the green logo on the helmet. I don't hate it, but I would have preferred the white on the black. But that all aside, the black looks good. Good for so you, Jared. Green Aaron Rodgers, White Sauce Gardner, Black Jermaine Johnson. Those are my jerseys this year. I love it. It's a good, it's a good crew. I might get a green Hennessy, like we talked about earlier. Ah. Because Hennessy is going to be here forever. Forever. That's the way it goes. Let's all head over to Nick Shine's show. There is the link right there. Let me pin it for you guys if I can do that. Back and watch. If you didn't, if you were there.
there. All right, I hear Nick. Is he here? Yeah, I'm waiting for his reaction to everybody going in because they're already saying poached eggs in his chat. Right. Let's do I just sent him a super chat with poached eggs. He hasn't noticed yet. He's a little slow. He's slow. He's going to be like, what the hell is going on? All right. I just pinned the message to the top of the chat. We are out of here. Thanks, Jet It Out, for closing us out. Uh, we're out of here. Have a good night. I'll see you over on Proud New York Jets fans to blow up Nick. Let's let's fluster him tonight. If anybody deserves it, it's Nick. Have a great night, everybody. We'll see you next time. Yeah, here we come, baby. Here we come. Here the Jets, baby. I want to kiss you. Thanks, Joe. Yeah. You want to run or you want to duck down? You want to duck to the corner and get onto the bench and stay there. You play to win the game. Hello? My message for the fans, we're all frustrated with where we are right now. J-E-T-S, Jets, Jets, Jets.